college football is all about. Sign me up. You want offense? You want lots of points? Go watch the Big 12 later today. You want some defense? You want some violence? You want some incredible emotion? Stay tuned for the next three hours. Michigan won the toss, deferred to the second half. They'll put their defense on the field to start. R.J. Shelton deep to receive the opening kick. And it will come out to the 25-yard line. And just in case you forgot what this rivalry was all about, here it is. Sometimes you get your little brother excited when you're playing basketball and stuff. You let him get the lead. And then you just come back and take it back. Do you think of Michigan State as your little brother? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but just remember, pride comes before the fall. So they want to mock us all they want to mock us. I'm telling them, it's not over. So they can print all that crap all they want all over their locker room. It's not over. It'll never be over here. We'll be a coach here for a long time. It's not over. It's just starting. It's just starting. Truer words were never spoken by Mark D'Antonio as his team has won seven of the last eight meetings in this rivalry game and they'll start with the football against the nation's statistically speaking best defense and that defensive front stacks up L.J. Scott on first down. Now we were wondering which quarterback would start Brian Lewerke or Tyler O'Connor. Well it is Tyler O'Connor that gets the start for the Spartans. And Mark D'Antonio told us yesterday it was all about his ability to protect himself. If he could move he's been battling a lower extremity injury if he could move and protect himself he was going to play ahead of the redshirt freshman you see right there Brian Lewerke who started the last two games I like this move rivalry game fifth year senior he's stuck around in this program it'll be his game today LJ Scott it'll be third down and eight Allison. Well, guys, I talked to Mark D'Antonio right before we kicked things off, and he told me it would be Tyler O'Connor. The reason why he was moving around well during warm-ups, and Brock, you saw him as well. He didn't seem to be in any sort of pain. All they've said is that he had a lower leg injury, but he's not wearing any sort of brace or protective equipment at all. D'Antonio happy with what he saw, so he's going back to his redshirt senior. Not happy with the first two plays, putting him in third and eight, right into the teeth of the very best defense in college football, and right into their greatest strength, just 12 third down conversions against in seven games. 12 for 92 opponents against Michigan on third down. They rush four. O'Connor finds a man underneath. The 13th third down conversion this season for an opponent. And it's L.J. Scott that moves the chains, a gain of 12. One thing that will stand out to you on a college football Saturday with these two foes is how much it's about matchups. It's NFL-esque. It's creating my one-on-one, -on -one and you got to go out and win it. And there's not many advantages for Sparty today on the perimeter. But there is with L.J. Scott, and you see it right there. And that's one-on-one -on -one with Ben Gideon. That was two-man defensively for Michigan, a one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker in a very rare third-down conversion. Six offensive linemen and two tight ends as the Spartans line up to play in a phone booth on first and ten. Big boy football and an eight yard game by L.J. Scott with Prescott line the fullback helping to pave the way as Delano Hill came up to help on the stop. It's pretty amazing what a first down can do especially on third and eight and if I'm Michigan State today and I'm offensive coordinator Dave Warner I'm staying at base personnel as much as I can and I'm running right at Jabril Peppers big time player top five on Mel Kuyper's big board phenomenal athlete but he's 205 pounds playing strong side linebacker and he's at his best in space hitting creases smacking quarterbacks in the face like that power run run right at number five same formation same result grinding out a first down Michigan State across the 50. If you move the ball against this Michigan defense, you, at least in terms of what they've done under Jim Harbaugh, you're making news. And great quarterbacks, and Jim was one, and made a living for a long time in the NFL. They know that to win and play championship level football, you got to play great defense. It's what he's done at every turn at San Francisco with Stanford, and he's doing the same thing here at Michigan. Off again to Scott. Six plays, six touches for LJ Scott. Mike McCray tripped him up after a gain of two. 
And I said to you guys last night, I love nothing more than watching tape as a crew. And we dig into these matchups, and, and you try to find an advantage somewhere, especially in a game of this nature where teams huddle up, where there is some whiteboard that you get to drag your plays up against their plays. And the one advantage, the one matchup opportunity was your running backs. LJ Scott's a good one. Gerald Holmes is a good one. Mondre London's a good one. Those three backs are so much better than their two and five record may indicate. Ender out. RJ Shelton gets a crease. Gets to the sideline. It's another Spartan first down. But once again, it's base personnel. So you see Jabril Peppers up on the line of scrimmage in a base front and trying to get RJ, their most dynamic perimeter player, out into space. You fake that inside dive. And I'll tell you right now, I'm not seeing this in four or five games for Michigan. Only Colorado got them on their heels. That early third and eight conversion was critical to get some momentum here on this drive. And Michigan very stagnant defensively. Very little movement, very little stunts, very little pressure here in the opening series for them defensively. Eighth play of this opening drive. Another straight ahead run. There goes LJ Scott again. Right at the line to gain for another Michigan State first down. And without measurement, they say it's a 10 yard gain. And here's the biggest key if you're going to run this power system. And you're going to see it from Michigan on the other side. It is this movement. You have got to create movement so your offensive linemen can pull around. And Michigan, the last three weeks, has been driving those offensive linemen into the backfield. They have been owning that point of attack. And Michigan State, conversely, has had some challenges against no matter who they play. That's tremendous movement to allow the youngster there, Higby, the left guard, to pull around and open the lane. They'll run it again with L.J. Scott. Now, Brock, oftentimes you will see teams in their game notes or in their media guides talk about the weights that players are able to bench and able to squat. And sometimes we just think that's teams kind of bragging about how strong their guys are. But this group up front for Michigan, you saw on tape, literally the way they play is directly related to those numbers and how strong they are. Yeah, become. it's a power clean and a, and a squat and a press for Don Brown's crew. And they roll eight of them, something they could not do a season ago defensively. An entire new defensive line could roll in, and they don't miss a beat. Another handoff. L.J. Scott inside the 10. Hurdles down to the 5. This is only the seventh time this season that a team has been in the red zone against this Michigan defense. L.J. Scott again. Second and goal from just inside the five. And that time Jabril Peppers, who only plays 13 different positions for Michigan on both sides of the ball, was in the middle of the pile for the Wolverines. Yeah, you see his sense of acceleration, and that's why he's able to 205 pounds, little guy, to play that strong side linebacker. But this is what you want to do. You don't want to allow the great talents and athletes to go out and play in space, play in a phone booth. In fact, right below me here in our booth, Ram it down their throats. I'm hearing the fans from Michigan State seeing something they've really not seen in a month and a half. First time we see O'Connor in the shotgun. Little zone read. L.J. Scott has a lane. He's in the end zone. That's a Spartan touchdown. Seven-minute, two-second drive. One pass. 
Was that a Mark D'Antonio touchdown drive testing your manhood or what? Wow. Best player on the field for Michigan State not to have the best game of his career if you're going to take down number two. And number three off to a pretty good start. College football. You're watching the Big Ten on ESPN. Bob Lashusen alongside Brock Hewitt. Allison Williams down on the field. And it is a cauldron here at Spartan Stadium, especially after a seven-plus minute opening drive for Michigan State as they take the lead. And now number two about to get the football for the first time. Jabril Peppers, Jordan Lewis deep to receive a line drive kick. This will hop down to Peppers, scoops it up at the five. And he's bottled up at the 20-yard line. Let's take a look back at our drive recap brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. A 12-play drive brought 11 plays on the ground. And this was the biggest of them. Third and eight, right into the teeth of what Michigan does best defensively. Third and extra long. They get the one-on-one -on -one in conversion. And then just the mix of inside power. One perimeter run there by R.J. Sheldon. And we had a little tell yesterday. Dave Warner, offensive coordinator, I said to him, Dave, I don't know if it's just my eyes watching game tape, but I'm noticing an opportunity to get after Jabril Peppers. As, as good a player as he is, he's undersized. And he said to me, yeah, yeah, we've noticed that too. Jim's got phenomenal athletes, but we've got to run right at them as they did on that opening drive. Play action for Wilton Spade on first down. Pump fake, he wants the big one. Looking for Drake Harris. And Harris had a step just overthrown. Well, Wilton Spade, he threw an interception on his first attempt this season against Hawaii. He's only thrown one more since. And they're asking him to get on top of the football. He's a big man. He reminds me of Derek Anderson to a T. It's the number, it's the body type, the delivery. And they also said, did Tim Drevno, his coordinator, he's the best deep ball passer in America. Well, he had a shot for a touchdown there on a double move that they win, and he overshoots it. Right up the middle, a run for Davion Smith, dodging tacklers, breaking a tackle. What a run all the way out to about the 40-yard line, a gain of 20, and a Michigan first down. I'm seeing the same stunts from Michigan State this season. That's their inside linebacker dog blitz. They've run it for eight years here, nine years, ten years after D'Antonio. It's just they're not getting home. And that time it's Riley Bola, Chris Fry right in there running that stunt in the safety as well. Missed tackle, missed tackle, tremendous run there from Davion Smith. Now it's Ty Isaac as the eye back. He takes the toss. He's got blockers out in front. A gain of seven on first down for Ty Isaac and our first opportunity to say hi to Chris Cotter. Michigan 47 yard line. All right, Chris, and good to see Chris Evans in there as the lone setback after he left in the concussion protocol last week in the Illinois game. Play action, though, for Wilton Spate. Rolls to his right, flips one, and he finds Devin Asiasi. And the freshman tight end has a first down. It was a violent hit that Chris Evans took last week against Illinois. Brock lost his helmet. It almost looked like his head bounced off the turf. Yeah. But able to shake it off and play in this huge rivalry game. And today. he's a wonderful one-two punch. He's got a little more speed and quickness, home run hitting ability than Smith. But you'll see four different Wolverines carry the ball today at a minimum. Jet sweep, Eddie McDoom. He's got to step down the sideline. Into the red zone goes Michigan, another true freshman. And you can hear the McDoom from the crowd here at Spartan Stadium. Plenty of Wolverine fans are here as well. And hands on hips there of Grayson Miller. That's Kari Willis again. He's beaten on the double move early. And, and there's some injuries. This is a beat-up group defensively. You're starting safeties. You're real difference makers. Demetrius Cox is out for the game. Monte Nicholson is not starting today as well. He is nicked up, and I would expect Jim Harbaugh and his crew to not feel any pity, but continue to attack those safeties as much as they can. Empty backfield. 
Spade over the middle. He's got Amara Darbo. A gain of eight down the 10 yard line where it will be second down and two. When you talk about playing tall, you don't want to be so upright that you're unathletic. Uh, but when you're six foot six, Wilton Spade, early in the season, he was sinking into a lot of his throws. Six six was becoming six two. Something that Jed Fish has really worked on. It stood out a week ago. His very best game is a Wolverine as you see Peppers coming in the Wildcat package. Avion Smith just behind Jabril Peppers. And off to Davion Smith. First and goal. How about the response by this Michigan offense starting from their own 20 yard line with the crowd going wild after a terrific opening drive by Michigan State methodically marching down to the three yard line. Well it's what championship teams typically do. You, know, you get into November here that calendar will turn and guys get beat up and you're going to play quality opponents that know you're familiar with you're going to take advantage and Pepper stays in the game. And championship teams typically respond exactly as the Wolverines have on this drive. Peppers on a straight keeper. Turns the corner at the pylon. A Michigan touchdown. And they're a point after away from the equalizer. When you watch the third best offense scoring wise in college football what you see is everybody contributes not only in the amount of touches with 19 different guys carrying it beautiful play by Peppers to get right to the pylon but Chesson right out in front of that play wide receiver uh, that's a beautiful shot he does his part he seals that edge and gives Peppers his buddy the opportunity to show off that fantastic speed eight plays 80 yards for Michigan and we are tied at seven in the rivalry game here in East Lansing. Entering the end zone was Jabril Peppers. And now he's about to go back out there with a Michigan defense that I'm sure will play a bit of a chip on its shoulder after they got steamrolled on that first drive by Michigan State. Yeah, I think you're going to see some movement, some stunts, some blitzes. I don't think they're going to just sit in their base defense and let Michigan State hammer it at him. RJ Shelton takes a knee. And we'll come out to the 25 yard line. Michigan State with the football when we return. the friendship and understanding you can go to playunified.org to learn more awesome awesome we've had a chance to volunteer with the special olympics we'll get a chance when they come to 2018 to seattle to be a part of it can't wait gerald holmes now the tailback drive number two for the spartans play action for tyler o'connor steps up in the pocket floats one high up the seam intended for Josiah Price and a very late flag is thrown. He was tied up Jordan Lewis. There is no foul for defensive pass interference. Second down. It looked like the original call was defensive holding. They changed it to pass interference and then maybe ruling that an uncatchable football. That'd be the only reason because you see the little tug there. This is a veteran group defensively now for Michigan. Ten seniors, Peppers going pro. And a little savvy move from Lewis to tug the jersey with the ball sailing far and away.
football start. Offense, number 70. Five-yard penalty. Great second down. So now it's second down and 15 as Tyler Higby costs his team five yards. Mark Antonio knows he's going to have some semblance of balance. It's not going to be 11 runs to one pass on every single possession. I love that play pass on first down, but you miss. Ball start, you fall behind the sticks off schedule. Very difficult against this group defensively. They want the screen, and it's not there. Diagnosed perfectly by the Wolverine defense. And Chris Warmly got pressure on Tyler O'Connor. Now it's third down at 15. And let's head down to Allison. Yeah, not the uh, showing Michigan State's offense was hoping here the second time out. That first time out, though, really happy with the physicality they showed up front against us. Very talented Michigan defense. Then, and the offensive line coach, Mark Santon, came over to his guys and he told them, that's the way we punch him in the mouth. And you have to do that for 60 minutes. We're going to go out there and do it again and again and again. Very fiery, like the way his guys went right at Michigan. Well, hard to punch this defense in the mouth on third and 15. Four man rush. Underneath the completion to Price, but well short of the sticks. The ball ripped out, but they say he is down. So it will be a punt, and now a late flag is thrown. An altercation after the play was over. Welcome to rivalry football. This is exactly what happens in moments like this, and I love what the referees did on that initial pass interference call. Getting together, what did you see? And here, definitely down, and Hill comes in for the cheapy. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 44. 15 yards penalty for the end of the run. Automatic first down. This is number 44, first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty of the game. And there's no doubt that Price is down. And you can see Michigan fighting and clawing and digging. It's actually Hill. That's not the penalty that comes after. It's that shot right there. So a free first down for Michigan State by penalty. And now they go back to the ground with Holmes. Taco Charlton, after a gain of a yard and a half, was there to make the stop back to Chris. Well, Chris, we've got the same score here. Michigan was on the verge of forcing Michigan State to punt. But the penalty on third down and long gives Michigan State a first down and allows them to continue to shorten this game. End around. R.J. Shelton gets a block on the edge. And he's a yard shy of the first down. And it looks like a flag is thrown right about where R.J. Shelton turned the corner. Holding offense number 22, 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. The fullback Delton Williams called for the hole. And once those hands get outside the frame, they're just going to get penalty called. I think it was actually inside. I think it was the wide receiver to me, 88 Madaris, much more than the fullback. At the 39 yard line. Yeah. You get out on that perimeter, and I like it. The inside and the outside punch. Like a pitcher that wants to pitch inside and outside. But when you run on that perimeter, especially against the speed of Michigan and their secondary defenders, you have got to keep your hands inside the frame. A spot foul, so it's second and 14. Here comes the blitz. O'Connor off his back foot. He was able to pick up three yards or so to Jamal Lyles. So once again, it will be third down and long. Delano Hill was all over Jamal Lyles. Conventional wisdom says he played a little bit of zone on third and long, especially when you've given up a couple third down conversions. But the beauty and the advantage that Michigan has defensively is they trust their guys on the perimeter immensely. They don't care what the situation is to play that press man coverage and to just batter a quarterback, to hit and harass 24 sacks this season, fourth in the country. 
In these environments, Don Brown doesn't mind bringing a little heat every once in a while as well. O'Connor, in as he throws, somehow squeezes it to Josiah Price, who reaches the ball out, and he's got a first down. How about that? Tyler O'Connor took a shot from Ryan Glasgow and still was able to muscle the ball to the edge. The conversation in East Lansing has been a challenging one this season. They're not used to losing. They lost five games the last three years combined. It's been the seniors that have felt a lot of that weight. Mark D'Antonio saying he wants this football field to be the sanctuary for these players. But man, did he want his seniors to show up. And that's a big time play from two seniors that have been used to winning. And that's winning football again on third down. Looking for room and finding some is Gerald Holmes. It's a gain of five. And a surprise change of the line of scrimmage. This offensive line for Michigan State has done a good job getting a push up front so far. Well, look at the double team block right there in the middle between the right tackle, right guard. That's Machado and Allen, two of your better offensive linemen. And it is that initial push. If you're going to play power gap football, you have got to win when you've got a double team. They do. How about the patience of Holmes? Not just LJ Scott that can tote the ball. These running backs know to have patience in this system and let it develop. But it's that initial push that's probably the biggest surprise of this first quarter. Another carry by Holmes. He's about three yards shy of the first down as Maurice Hurst came through first for Michigan. And this should take us to the end of the first quarter with the Wolverines only having had one possession. That was a touchdown drive. But if your goal, if your Michigan State is to shorten the game, could they have done a better job of that in the first quarter? No, they couldn't, and the majority of it all on the ground until they needed their seniors to make plays in the passing game. We said this was going to be an NFL-esque game. That was an NFL-esque first quarter. First drive of the game, capped by L.J. Scott for Michigan State. Jabril Peppers answered for Michigan, tied at seven after one. Offensively for the Spartans. Michigan has only had the ball once, and we're about to begin the second quarter. Tied at seven with a big play here. Third down and three for the Spartans in plus territory. Bob Schusen, Brock Hewitt, Wilson Williams here at Spartan Stadium. Gerald Holmes moves the pile. And now an interesting decision for Mark D'Antonio. Fourth down and one inside the 40-yard line. Too far to try a field goal. Too close to punt. Do you go for it? You want your defense at opening possession? Because I did. You go for it. Your chance to win this game is going to be possessing the ball and keeping it out of the hands of the third best scoring offense in America. Against the number one total defense and number four rushing defense in America. Gerald Holmes spins. Is he still alive? It looks like he might be short. That second effort almost got him to the line to gain. But it looks like Michigan got the stop. Jabril Peppers came up and just seemed to hold Gerald Holmes short. And this is why you run at Jabril Peppers and not away from him, Bob. Looks to be certain they're going to bring the chains out, but he looks to be at least a half, if not a full yard shot of the first down. So this will make it official, and it's not even close. Michigan gets the stop on downs. And it's a big fella inside. It's Maurice Hurst, defensive tackle. That initial penetration that the Wolverines have had a hard time finding. And then Jabril Pepper shows you why he's capable of playing linebacker and why Don Brown loves him. It's not being run at. It's when you run away, that speed comes to life and Peppers makes the play.
case here for the first 16 minutes of action. Michigan has looked differently on the road than they have at home where they've been more than dominant, where they've been suffocating to the point I saw Pete Carroll this week, early in the week, and he said, you make sure you tell Jim Harbaugh that we're watching from afar and what a job he has done defensively. Well, the defense just got great field position for the offense. Deion Smith stopped at the line. Second effort, maybe a yard. Another opportunity to check in with Chris Cotter. Seven seven here in East Lansing and second down and nine. Jabril Peppers back in to take the snap. An end around. McDoom has a step. Eddie McDoom with blockers in front. Gets to the sideline. Finally bumped out by the Spartans inside their 30 yard line. Players formations plays. It's the ethos of the great play callers, especially at the NFL level. Get my players into a position to have success. McDoom's a freshman. He doesn't run the greatest comebacks yet or in cuts, but man, when he gets on the perimeter, is he ever dangerous? It's been fly sweeps most of the season. That time, the reverse action. Check out this formation. Saw this last week on the first touchdown of the game for Michigan against Illinois. Spade off play action. Looks downfield. Hoists one for Jake Butt. Drops it in. He holds on. First and goal at the one. Can't throw it better than that, and that's the advantage of being a 6'6 quarterback. And I think why Jim Harbaugh is going to continue to attract that position that wants to play at the next level. That's why you stay in tall. You got pressure right in your face. And he may have missed the opening shot of the game on a double move, but he's been spot on since, and you can't throw it better. He had pressure coming right in his chest. If he trusts Jake Butt immensely, put tremendous error, dropped it, as you said, Bob dropped it right over the top and allowed his All-American to, to finish. Well, Don Willard, our referee, was buzzed by the replay booth, ruled down at the two-yard line on a completion to Jake Butt. But the replay booth saw maybe that ball wiggle just enough that they want to take another look. Ruled a catch on the field. So there has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn that call. This might be the best look we get. That's a little bobble. We had a game earlier this year where we had just a little bobble. And when you slow it down frame by frame, and you got the wonderful shots we do in our truck today, the pylon cam and the sky cam and everything else, I think that call stands. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. And I like that. And one of the points of emphasis is also to watch it in real speed. And Jake Butt knows it. That ball can hit the ground. And I think he largely controlled that all the way through the reception. Big time play, and I love the energy and fire out of these seniors. They should be. Haven't beaten these, this Michigan State team, Jake Button, his career. And he wants to badly. And this offense operating an efficiency level they have all season long. Khalid Hill. That is his 16th carry this season. And he has eight touchdowns. A very late flag comes out of the pile. After the play was whistled dead. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number four, the play pulling an opponent off the pile. Penalized half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. This is number four, it's the first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty of the game. Well, hopefully that gets number four going. We've not called his number. And Malik McDowell has to be a difference maker. And this also a point of emphasis you've seen at the NFL level as well. You cannot pull those players off the pile. And even though Cole responds, can't do it, Malik. 
So Michigan gets the down back at the one yard line. The toss, maybe on Smith. At the pylon. Looks like he danced inside it. That's a Michigan touchdown. Two possessions for the Wolverines, two scores, and they've got the lead. Another fancy. Mm. Want to run inside, want to run outside, want to run power, toss. 19 different Wolverines have carried the ball this year, and every one of them has done it effectively. Wonder Out at Michigan State, he valued that resource center because it helped him manage his illness in school. He was a Michigan State student, but Alex was treated at Michigan, so we can have, Brock, one of these big rivalries on the field that's filled with a lot of good old-fashioned dislike from a football standpoint, but it's things like that that show you what college football and college sports can be. R.J. Shelton, returnable from inside the two. And he gets out to about the 25. Tonight, undefeated, number three, Clemson, battling number 12, Florida State, at eight on ABC, presented by Walmart. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. And watch ESPN. One of the seven unbeaten teams on the road. Yeah. We've got one here with Michigan. Can Clemson slow down Dalvin Cook? Well, they have to, and one of the best running backs in America is going to have to carry it tonight, because I look at that matchup somewhat like this one today. Michigan's grown men. There are seniors all across the board, battle-tested, much like Clemson is. Florida State's going to play a lot of young people defensively, especially. I think you've seen some of the maturity of Michigan to withstand that early blow. Here's L.J. Scott. He was the workhorse on the first possession. And he breaks out of the pot with the stiff arm. Pushed out by Delano Hill at midfield. That's not something you've seen very often. That's a couple missed tackles. That's Ben Gideon, the middle linebacker. That's Demonte Thomas. Both of them unblocked right on the edge. But Shelton beats them both. And Michigan State wants to play with some tempo. Shot play. Now a look over from Tyler O'Connor. And I think that's an opportunity to look at these safeties here. If you have a big play, a momentum play, an opportunity to come back and take a shot. But if the look isn't there, run it. They run it again with Scott. Don't you get the feeling, Brock, that this drive in particular, vital now that Michigan State's down, you want to show that that first drive wasn't a fluke against a great defense with your scripted plays, that right. you can actually deal with adjustments and come out and do it again to arguably the best defense in college football. Yeah, there's a lot of hungry players. L.J. Scott says, feed me. Jabril Peppers wants to be fed. A lot of guys want to be spoon-fed today. But if Michigan State is going to do it, it's going to have to be up front and in this run game. And eventually, at some point, a play-action shot off of it. But typically only if you see that single safety. You get the two high safeties, you want to continue to try to run it. Again, it's L.J. Scott. Again, he's got a crease. Inside the 30. Let's check in with Allison. Well, guys, defensive coordinator for Michigan, Don Brown, addresses defense as a whole, and then he got in the face of his two senior defensive ends, Taco Charlton and Chris Wormley, and he basically said, I need you two to take over this game and start start kicking some tail out there and exerting your will a bit more. You can see they've been able to break a lot of runs out on that perimeter. And Allison, you are spot on right there. You're seeing it exactly right. And that time it was Taco Charlton in the senior price for Michigan State. A power run, you've got to win initially up front, and these two ends have not been held and contained the way they have this afternoon. Play action for O'Connor. Floats one to the sideline. And that's out of bounds. Jamal Lyles was the closest to it for Michigan State. And here's what we're talking about on that previous play right here. It's right on this edge. If you're going to play two safeties back here, then these guys got to set the edge defensively. And you're going to see advantage Michigan. That's a difficult one on one block. That's what NFL tight ends get paid a lot of money to do to turn that defensive end. His job is to set the edge. Once again, you know, one of my favorite lines in football, ultimate team game still comes down to so many individual battles. You also said run right at Jabril Peppers. He ended up underneath Tyler Higby on that last play. Shelton 
Brought down behind the line. There's an impact play by Ryan Glasgow, the former walk-on. One of three brothers. One already graduated, two on the team now to play for Michigan. All three walk-ons, and Glasgow, a tackle for loss. He sure does. And you're expecting, if you're Michigan State, with all that run right at them, for those Michigan State D linemen maybe to slow down just an inch and to not penetrate. But Glasgow does. He's unblocked, and he's able to get Shelton in the backfield, as you see Peppers be intended to. So Jabril Peppers off the field for third down and 16. A spot where you might want to just get into field goal range if you can, if you're Michigan State. Well said. O'Connor steps up in the pocket under some pressure. Tried to squeeze one to Felton Davis. Incomplete. This is a very difficult spot on the field to send your punt group out at the 34-yard line. But you may have no other choice. Michigan will stay play it safe defensively and one of the points of emphasis for O'Connor and D'Antonio was could he protect himself and Mark had to like his quarterback stepping up into the pocket but very difficult tight coverage to throw into as they go for the field goal so they're going to send Michael Geiger out for a 52 yard field goal which would be a career long this is not what you would think would be inside his range the senior has enough leg he's got it Senior stepping up. Number three in career points in Michigan State. Three more on the board for the Spartans. 52 yards away for Geiger. And they've lost four in a row here in Spartan Stadium. Haven't beaten Spart the Spartans on the road since 2007, but that time they hold to a field goal attempt. Michael Geiger, only his third career attempt of over 50 yards and a career-long 52-yarder. Devin Cronin, the kickoff specialist, with some hang time. And Jordan Lewis on the back pedal takes a knee. Let's give you today's Aflac trivia question. Aflac. This is a great one. Can you name the five schools to have at least one player selected in the last 50 NFL drafts? I guess there's no outlier. No, they're household name schools, but there are some schools missing from the five that you would think would be your first guesses. You know what's not missing? Execution here for Michigan offensively. Flawless in their two opening touchdown drives. Avion Smith on first down, brought down behind the line. Ed Davis who is just rounding back into form. Honorable mention, all Big Ten back in 2014 as a junior, but tore his ACL just before last season began. Not only had to sit out, but was granted a sixth year by the NCAA, and he got the start today. Wilton Spate looking downfield. Hit as he throws and fires a strike to Amara Darbo. Let's go back to Chris Cotter. All right, Chris, thanks very much. After an NFL throw by Wilton Spade, it's a first down and a diamond formation. A handoff to Chris Evans. He's got speed with the stiff arm. The true freshman to midfield. Very close to another first down. Well, you can check out our alternate angle sky game coverage of today's game streaming live on Watch ESPN, brought to you by Microsoft Cloud. And if you're going to watch it, like I've been watching an awful lot, you're going to see Wilton Spate stand in there strong. NFL is right. NFL body, six foot six, 240. But more importantly, standing and delivering as you see him scan that field. Safety's first into the run. Blitz off the edge. Spate avoids. He's got a chance for a big play. Out in front. He's got Darbo inside the 10.
It breaks your will defensively when you've got three runners at a quarterback. It was Ed Davis earlier that could not get home. And here's the edge pressure of the corner blitz that equally looking like Big Ben Roethlisberger standing strong. And most importantly, when you're six foot six and you can see over that entire field, you stand and you see Darbo working with you. I'll tell you what I love. I love the, his ability to drop it into that bucket, and that is, again, the advantage of being an awfully big quarterback. Last year's hero, Jalen Watts Jackson, was the player that missed on the blitz. Avion Smith to the five-yard line, where it will be second down and goal. Dave Sherrard was there to bring him down. This will be the next step for Wilton Spade. He's going to say, don't put peppers on the field. I can, I can do this. I, I could keep it. He knows it. He actually ran 4-7 in high school. So you're looking at 6-6, 235, and you're not looking at a guy that is totally immobile back there. I think pretty reflective on that play that he extended for the deep shot down the field. Spade off play action. Floats one into traffic. Incomplete intended for Davion Smith. As good as Michigan's defense is in the red zone, their offense is almost as good. They've got 31 touchdowns on 41 red zone trips so far this season. Makes this an enormous third down midway through the second quarter. Spade incomplete intended for J.U. Chesson here comes the field goal group as Michigan State gets a red zone stop and that was a must I mean if you're Michigan State here you just can't fall behind double digits you just don't have an explosive offense that stop allows you to continue to play with patience offensively wonderfully read there by Kari Willis the safety he studied the plays he knew the scheme he jumped the corner out forced the incompletion and Allen broke a slump, as you could see last week against Illinois. This only a 23-yarder. Right down the middle, and Michigan answers the field goal for Michigan State and pushes the lead back to seven. You should be on that list, obviously, no question. R.J. Shelton from the goal line. Good job by the Michigan coverage team to get him inside the 20-yard line. And a big Saturday rolls on. 3.30 Eastern with Northwestern taking on number six Ohio State. And then at seven, seventh-ranked Nebraska at Camp Randall to meet Wisconsin. Both games are on ESPN, also streaming live on the ESPN app. And watch ESPN. It really is our honor to kick off a triple header of Big Ten football today here on ESPN. And how important are all three of these games? We take a look at the Big Ten standings. And, of course, Michigan, Ohio State looming Thanksgiving weekend. But Nebraska getting no love. Boy, what a challenge for them. Big underdogs at Wisconsin. Great pursuit by the Michigan defense as L.J. Scott not only had nowhere to run but lost three yards forced out by Mike McCray. Well, you know who it was? It was a true freshman. It was that defensive end. Sure, the rest of the buddies can come and corral the tackle, but it was Rashawn Gary Allison's point earlier that Don Brown was all over his guys and his defensive linemen to set the edge, and it took the number one recruit in America to engage the blocker to push him back in that the pursuit to come and finish for a rare tackle for loss here in the first half. Out of Paramus Catholic in New Jersey where Jabril Peppers spent his last two years of high school. O'Connor wanted a shovel pass with a flag down and he is brought down at the 11-yard line by McCray. We'll have to check the penalty marker but Michigan diagnosed the shovel pass and there was nowhere to go with the football. The penalty is against Michigan State, immediately declined by Jim Harbaugh. Illegal shift, offense, two men moving, prior snap and did not reset. That penalty's declined. 
third down. That's a scary position to be in for a quarterback. You've got the ball in your hands and there's nowhere to go and two defenders just licking their chops to take their shot. And there's only so many times you can get in the third down. A beautiful shot here is R.J. Shelton trying to get on the perimeter and he gets held up just enough. The timing breaks down. That's no man's land. No opponent has had more than four third downs converted against this Michigan defense all season. Michigan State already with two here in the first half, but third and 15 is a different deal. Four-man rush. Long throw, man-to-man -man coverage, incomplete, intended for Monty Medeiros. So now the Spartans will have to punt from deep in their own end as Jordan Lewis was running in coverage. That's a man-to-man -man coverage on third and 15. They don't care, and you can see a pretty good pop from O'Connor. That could have been called. That's definitely called at the NFL level. If this is an NFL game, there is no doubt that's called. Maurice Hurst may have a little talking to on the sideline. And this is where this kid is the most electric. To Bill Peppers at his own 45-yard line, and now a flag thrown. False start. Offense number 57. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. And this is what Mark D'Antonio was talking about with us yesterday. He said, we've been playing good football. I know we're two and five, but we have had stretches in every one of these games. And typically in the first half where we've been good, we just have been awful. 30 points for, 84 against in the fourth quarter, running out of gas, hitting the wall. Peppers, plenty of room for a return from his own 44. That's across the 50 into Michigan State territory. That last sequence, though, is where Michigan's defense changes games. They're number one in FBS and three and outs. They're as good as any team in America at field position. And now you force a punt deep in your own end, plus territory. You start with the football. How much of a danger zone is this game in right now for Michigan State? Huge. And they deferred, so they'll get the ball to start the second half. And what you get a sense in the field, you can watch it on tape all you want, but you see it in person, and they're just relentless. And that's what the elite teams are. That's what all the teams in the top five and Alabama is as well. You just can never relax. There's no gimmies. There's nothing easy. Everything is earned and they've earned this number two ranking. And I knew coming in they were good watching the tape. I knew they were elite watching them in person. They're living up to it, especially offensively. Alabama idle this week. So you got to figure a lot of their fans right now might be watching this game to take a look at this Michigan defense to see if they really do stack up with the tie. And they don't. Let's be clear. Alabama's defense, nobody almost historically is stacking up with what they're doing because not only are they play in just tremendously sound defense, they're doing what the great and the most elite have ever done, and that's take the ball away. And that would be, I guess, the one area for Michigan. You know, as the season evolves and they come down their stretch of the season, can they find more takeaways? 12 on the season. I think there's more in there to be had. That's Chris Fry slow to get up. Let's take another look and see how he got hurt. And could the replay booth possibly initiate a targeting call on that hit? That's Devin Bush coming in. Yes. And that looked like crown of the helmet, forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless player, which could be in the judgment of the officials, Chris Fry, because that's a blind side block, arguably, on a return. The only challenge is defenseless because he's running down to cover the kick and he's turning. That would be the only challenge, I think, to that analysis, Bob. No buzz down. Spate under pressure. Does well to get the ball away just to avoid a sack. Demetrius Cooper all over Wilton Spate. And that is the strength of a six foot six, 240 plus pound quarterback that Cooper is now injured and he was not able to bring him down. And we saw earlier, I mean, a shot right up the gut with Ed Davis literally hitting Spate in the gut, could not bring him to the ground as well. And this is an area of just tremendous concern for Michigan State. They've had to move Malik McDowell, in fact, away from, I think, his strength, Bob, of playing inside to have to play outside defensive end because they've just not gotten production from that position. So while Demetrius Cooper is tended to by the training staff, let's go back to Chris Cotter.
and a very low scoring affair. That's not the score you would expect in a Big 12 matchup between two teams that are high octane offensively and go as fast as could be. Looks like Chris Fry is okay is that headshot that he took on the punt return and shaking that off. And I'll tell you what else you don't expect especially if you're down on the field level and you look at William Spade at 6'6", 240 pounds. You don't expect elusive. And we saw Lamar Jackson and Sean Watson. He's not bad. He's never going to be a dual threat quarterback. But elusive for pocket guys is very different. As we learned from the great Tom Brady who wore that helmet at one day. Elusive is avoiding sacks just like that. Negative 10 yard loss because you have the ability to break tackles and get it out of your hands. Jabril Peppers though in to take the direct snap. A little zone read. He's got room. Jabril Peppers spins inside the 35 yard line with a Michigan first down. That's a gain of 15. And this group up front is just so defeated, just physically. They're just so beat up. And you, you could do this all game. If Jabril Peppers ran zone read in, in the Wildcat quarterback, I think they could do this on every single snap because there's enough options. And as Drevno said, heck, he could even throw it at times within this package. But this is a beat up crew. You see 64 Clemens. He's a converted guard. Started the first game, four games this season, in fact. An offensive guard, and they're just having a hard time stopping the run. Now it's Karan Higdon. Down to the 30 yard line with a gain of three. Let's check in with Allison. Well, Bob Brock, it's interesting you guys just mentioned Tom Brady because that is the film that Jed Fish, who works with quarterbacks, showed Wilton Spate this week. He always uh, cuts up different NFL examples of things he needs to focus on. And the reason he showed him that film of Brady was just what you guys were talking about movement in the pocket, having patience, knowing when and where to move, and then also getting that shoulder back to your target. So that was a big point of emphasis this week for Spate. Well, he's nailed it. And now Shane Morris is in the game at quarterback. Sweet. The toss to J.U. Chesson. Morris out there paving the way, but up to the task that time is the defensive front led by Ed Davis for the Spartans. That's a loss of a yard and a half, and it will be third down and nine. And kudos to Mike Tressel having his guys ready to go. Did so on third down in the red zone. That's a sweep. That's the tendency, and they play it right. What are you hoping to accomplish by bringing Morris in the game to run that play? Well, you just play into his strength. But obviously that strength not good enough and this is a must for Michigan State and you can hear it from their fans here defensively. Maybe a timeout called defensively by Mark D'Antonio from the sideline. Looked like there was some confusion in coverage Prior for the, the Spartans so we'll come back Michigan State in 30 seconds. First time out of the half. It's a 30 second timeout. And ready for and to me this is four down territory as long as you don't go backwards only one wide out two tight ends Spate back to throw well protected fires a strike walling off his man was Amara Darbo he's got the first down That's just so good and Mark D'Antonio knows those are the little plays. Those are the plays that over the last three years they made. That's it. That's an in route. That's quarters coverage. They play their base defense and over the years when they've been so dominant that safety is a half step quicker and he's collisioning and forcing the punt or forcing the field field goal and they're just a half step late here this season defensively. They also had Shalik Calhoun, Joel Heath and Lawrence Thomas oh. rushing the passer last season. All three now in the NFL. On first down, Spade finds a crosser. It's Chesson to the 16-yard line. Down to Allison. Talking about the NFL experience for this Michigan staff, every single offensive assistant coach has NFL coaching experience, including offensive coordinator Tim Drevno, who is with the 49ers. And he said when you're in the NFL and you see teams in your division twice a year, you really learn how to switch things up. And also it helps because he knows exactly what this offense should look like when it's at its peak. And then he can take that tape and show it to his team now for exactly what the plays should look like. It's really a huge benefit, they feel. Back to Shane Morris, a quarterback, though. Jet sweep to Jabril Peppers. Out of bounds. At the 14, maybe the 13-yard line, and it looks to be a yard shy of the first down. You asked me earlier why. Why do you bring Morris in? Why, why do you run that play? You also run plays at times to set a defense up. They know the tendency that it's been a perimeter run for Morris, and that time trying to get them to key on him, expecting him to go left. 
And you bring Peppers around right, always stacking your plays. That's what the elite coordinators, the elite offenses typically do. Eighth play of the drive, third down and one. Maybe on Smith, met, driven back. Chris Fry got there first. It will be fourth down. Does Jim Harbaugh manage the game like an NFL team here might take the three or do you go for it on fourth down? I think he's going to trust and believe or he may take this clock down here to consider and think through and that's exactly what he's going to do. We're going to get the ball to begin the second half, going to take this play clock all the way down and put their minds together once a time, once again to get to their best call. 105 to go in the first half, which is right where the play clock would have been at one when Jim Harbaugh wanted to call his timeout. For some reason, the play clock just resets. And don't you short Jim Harbaugh a second. Don't you short him a half a yard. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's the whole point of the strategy. Win. That's right. Fourth down and one. And it is the Michigan offense coming out to run a play on fourth and one. Is this a hard count? It, sh it could be. It's also in their greatest strength is the right side of their line. In these short yardage situations with Hill, with the big guy, you see Asiasi in there as well. I would be surprised if this is a run, that it's not behind that right side of the O-line. Fourth down and one. And now a timeout called by Mark D'Antonio. Second charge, timeout of the half. Michigan State, it's a 30-second timeout. So now Michigan State wants some time. That gives us an opportunity for another update with Chris Cotter. All right, Chris, thanks very much. So after timeouts by both teams, it is still fourth down and one. Malik McDowell has been quiet. We have not called his number much here in the first half. And he's got to be a difference maker. He's the best player. He's top ten on Kuiper's board. That last play, timeout, because Jake Butt was going to get into a one-on-one -on, -one on the perimeter D'Antonio wanted no part of. to Khalid Hill. He moves the pile. Michigan's got the first down. Elite teams have tendencies, and they have tendencies because they execute them at a very high level. Eight rushing touchdowns for Hill. Every one of them has been between the center to right tackle. And no surprise to me whatsoever, that play ran right behind the two redshirt senior offensive linemen. Now Michigan still has two timeouts. So the clock not a huge factor, even though it's under one minute. And another timeout will be called defensively by Michigan State. Third and final charge, timeout of the half. Michigan State. And it doesn't look like Mark D'Antonio was happy to have to call that one. No, and that's defensive coordinator Mike Tressel right there. And that's having some conversations. And unlike on the other side, where there's a tremendous amount of experience and depth within their scheme, Michigan State's got moving parts all over the place. And that defensive line and secondary, a linebacker, been devastated with injuries, but Mark Antonio knows this moment and the magnitude of it. With Michigan getting the ball to begin the second half, scoring on every possession thus far, and once again in scoring zone, the messages have to be either a takeaway, a field goal, but if this is seven, getting the ball to begin the second half, they're playing top gun danger zone in here earlier. It would be danger zone for Sparty. Well, especially considering the defense that this Spartan offense is going to have to go to and go at the rest of the afternoon. That was why there was a part of me before fourth and one that was thinking a field goal there for Michigan. Not the worst result. You take a two score lead arguably to the locker room. You get the ball to start the third quarter and the strength of your team is you have arguably America's best defense. Yep. At least statistically to this point they are. And gets an offense that doesn't have perimeter weapons. Uh, you see how hard it is for every yard for Michigan State to turn those first downs offensively. Can ill afford to go down 14 going into half here. You have to give me some credit as being the only broadcaster in America that would second guess a play call after it worked. That's right. 
You are from Jersey. Yes. Now Spade out of the shotgun. Has time. He's looking for the pylon. Incomplete. Flag down. Drake Harris, the intended receiver. He ran a corner route. Justin Lane, a true freshman, was there in coverage. Kind of. He had to reach out because he wasn't. Because he got flat footed like a freshman does, watching the play happening instead of reacting and playing the defense. And all he could do was grab. Prior to the pass being thrown, holding defense number 39. Unless half the distance to the goal line, automatic first down. No doubt about it. Little grab of the jersey by Justin Lane. And Jim Harbaugh got the exact flag that he was hoping for. He who hesitates is lost. Those are the words of the coordinator Mike Tressel in that moment of hesitation and doubt puts Michigan at the five yard line. Davion Smith up the middle. Reaches the ball out, pushes the pile into the end zone. That's a Michigan touchdown. You can hear it now, can't you? Jimmy Harbaugh talking about this offense. And he'll always credit the players, and more importantly, he'll credit the execution. You're running right into, once again, a, a stunt that has been called to take that inside run away. But Smith able to shed the tackles, move the pile. You want speed, they got it. You want power, you have it. You want a quarterback that can stand tall and deliver, you got it. And Nesty got four scores and four possessions. And is there ever a better indicator of a championship team than a rivalry game on the road where the opposition goes right down the field and scores a touchdown to start the game? Think about Michigan from that point on. They have outscored State. 24 to 3 and they start the third quarter with the football so we talked about danger zone right now for Michigan State I'm not sure how frisky they'll get with their play calling with 39 seconds to go in the half and no timeouts but their defense hasn't gotten a stop yet well let me add one other thing as well and you saw the shot there at Jim Harbaugh with his staff and that is never celebrating what you just did right his whole mantra is always ahead push it ahead what's done is done and this conversation is about this kickoff right here. And what, what do we want to do? And how do we want to play these final 39 seconds out? You just never satisfied. Right, it was earlier this year. It was Indiana, Ohio State we had in a close game. And Indiana was fighting tooth and nail. But they just took a little breath before half. Ohio State, 70-yard kickoff return. This guy does not take a breath, ever. And his team responds and I think is reflected accordingly. And again, complimentary football, which is what they talk about in the NFL, probably more so than even in college. But Jabril Peppers with the short punt return, but into plus territory. What does your offense do with the short field starting at the plus 48? Ten plays down the field, they score a touchdown. R.J. Shelton in the corner, inside the five. Brought down at about the 28-yard line with 33 seconds to go in the half. Well, this college football season, you can stream every game live on the ESPN app and on Watch ESPN. Just download the app or visit WatchESPN.com today. And you can't be foolish here. You can't just say, well, we don't have timeouts, 33 seconds. Let me just... You know, chuck it into coverage and make a play. There are too many game changers and playmakers in the back end of the secondary for Michigan as well. O'Connor will throw. And he's going to hoist one up. And it's going to be intercepted. Jordan Lewis picks it off. 27 seconds to go. Two timeouts for Michigan. Why, if you're Michigan State? I hope you're not asking me that question. I just told you you can't do that. What are the percentages here for Michigan State, in spite of the fact that you're down 14? I mean, does this show a sense of desperation just hoisting sure. one up? Sure. Well, and you also get blasted. Taco Charlton does a wonderful spin cycle move. The defensive end, and he puts his, his helmet right into the chest of O'Connor, forces that throw. But this is what you could not do down 14. But this is what you know this. We see this. 
This is what elite competition does, what Alabama does. Right? They just start to break your will, and ultimately you do get frustrated because it is so difficult to play against them. Jordan Lewis was a semifinalist for the Thorpe Award last season, as you saw seven career interceptions. So Wilton Spate with timeouts and field position. An easy pitch and catch to Darba to the 40 yard line and Jim Harbaugh wants to use one of those timeouts now before the clock starts again after the first down. We talk about this all the time especially during the breaks up here and you and I talk in football and game management and the advantage of NFL guys and the six NFL coaches right now or the six coaches collegially excuse me who have NFL experience half of them are in the top eight. Right, they understand matchups and scheme, but beyond that, just I think also these situation, these situational football. Kenny Allen's career long is 47 yards, so even if you're just thinking about a field goal, one more first down and you're in field goal range. Still with a timeout, still with 22 seconds. A field goal, of course, makes it a three possession lead, and Michigan, as we said, starts the third quarter with the football. certainly understand the aggressive mindset Correct. down two touchdowns but play the but percentages yep. with well, under 40 seconds and no duress, timeouts. Or if you're under duress you just throw it away. Okay Taco Charlton won and I'm sitting in there strong but I got to just sail this one into the ninth row. Blitz coming for Michigan State. Wilton Spade. He throws a jump ball down towards the end zone. Batted around and incomplete. Chesson had a chance. Drake Harris had a chance. Now 15 seconds to go. And for the first time you see Spade, he's taken a bunch of these shots. That was Andrew Dow that came through on the blitz. You drew the Ben Roethlisberger comparison yeah. earlier. And this is NFL quarterbacking. When you stand in there and you know you're going to get hit like that. And you can still put it 55 yards down the field into the end zone, give you guys an opportunity. Pretty rare. Another blitz from Michigan State. Picked up. Spate over the middle. Running to the 20 yard line is Darbo. Nine seconds to go. And the final timeout used by Michigan. And that's, and that's the cleats. Walked into the stadium with cleats. <laughs> What's well, a natural surface? <laughs> and why Harbaugh is going to look at him. I had to say, can't slow me down. I'll tell you, the poor guy that's got to run behind him holding the headset wire, that guy has to be in shape as well. He must train during the week. Well, here's situational football 101. And look at the coach right in the middle of it, reminding all of the guys. Okay, his quarterback can't take a sack. His guys, if you catch it, you know, short of the sticks, you're dead. So this this throw's got to go beyond the sticks, got to go into the end zone, and you have got to understand with nine seconds to salvage that field goal opportunity. With no timeouts, why not kick the field goal right here? You could, but you like your matchups outside, and you're going to give your veteran redshirt senior wide receivers, Jake Butt, you're going to give them an opportunity to take a shot into the end zone. So that actually, if the ball does travel to the end zone, gives Michigan State a chance to make a play. Yep. As their defense has not forced a punt yet. No timeouts for Michigan. This is a quarterback you remind those guys up front too to make sure they block the blitz. Here comes the blitz again. There's the shot to the end zone. Diving attempt by Darbo. Flag out. He ran past Tyson Smith. That's a heady play by Tyson. Now there's only four seconds to go. Pass interference. Defense number 15. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. We may only get one snap now. Do you use that for a shot at the end zone? No, here comes the field goal yeah. group. And this is, this is actually smart situational football. If it's close or you're beat at all, you grab, you tackle, you do what you've got to do. Five seconds off the clock, no timeouts. And they're still forced into kicking the field goal. So Allen.
Allen made from 23. This one also from 23 yards out to try and add three more for the Wolverines before halftime. He's got it. So the interception thrown by Tyler O'Connor costs Michigan State three more before halftime. The largest lead of this series at the break for Michigan since 2006. Let's go back to Chris Cotter. It's time for the Lexus halftime report. Susan Brock, you Allison Williams here in East Lansing. Really a model of efficiency in the first half. Michigan showed you why they're a championship caliber team. Five offensive possessions. They score points on every one. They took the first punch down 7 nothing, and since then have pretty much dominated the game. They sure have. And you know, it's 20, what, 27 to 3 after that first initial push by Michigan State. And it's been the quarterback to me. The Jabril Peppers gets a ton of credit, and he deserves it. Their defense is phenomenal. But I thought Wilton Spate, Wilton Spate played his best first half I've seen all season long, and it was standing and delivering. He's six foot six, and the number of times he just doesn't flinch, not an inch, when these guys are right in his face. And it's ball security, zero turnovers. It's one penalty. It's clutch on third downs, like that shot on the in cut right before halftime. They show them that NFL tape, but it's a lot of Tom Brady, it's a lot of Peyton Manning, it's a lot of the guys at the next level of what the picture is supposed to look like. This is what the play should look like when you execute it. Those 33 snaps in the first half had NFL kind of efficiency and execution. And Amara Darbo was his favorite target in the first half. 158 yards for Spate, 111 to Darbo. And Michigan starts the second half with the ball. They will start it at their own. 25 yard line and Allison Williams spoke with Jim Harbaugh and used some hustle to get yeah, the job you done. You hustle if you want to talk to We Harbaugh were proud of you. The half. Thank you. I'm not sure how good my stride looked, but Harbaugh very pleased with how his defense looked in that second half, especially after that opening drive. Better against the run, but he said in the second half they have to make sure they're good in coverage, <laughs> expecting uh, Michigan State to take some deep shots here. And Brock, you mentioned the play of Wilton Spade, really solid in that first half, and Harbaugh very happy with uh, how he's been able to go through his progressions. Well, he took, Brock, as you talked about it, some shots from blitzers, from free runners, stood in there and delivered the football. And now he has a very efficient offense back on the field to start the second half, up by 17. The toss to Ty Isaac. And Michigan State able to bottom up after a gain of a couple of yards. Brandon Clemens moved over to help on the stop as we take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Dell mistake free Brock for Michigan. Yep, but it's been the group that's running that's won 42 of the last 45 matchups team that ends this game with more rushing yards and I think we're going to see an awful lot of what you just saw on first down there. I, I think Michigan wants to continue to reinforce their strength at the line of scrimmage mix that inside and outside run and take this game over. Isaac with blockers in front bounces it outside short of the first down so now one of the key points that we heard Mark D'Antonio talk about Allison with going off before halftime his defense has to get some third down stops to have any chance and they've done everything uh, they played a, a mix of base coverage and their safety's having collision they blitzed and the guys can't get home they blitz and they've been free and hit the quarterback and can't impact the passer Trestle defensive coordinator has emptied the bucket. None of it's been successful yet. Chris Evans, the tailback, the speedster, the true freshman on third and two. Play action. Spate rolls left. Long throw to the sideline. What a catch by Amara Darbo. Adding to a terrific day. That's a gain of 15 more. We saw this in pregame. It's actually Jim Harbaugh on the other end of the deep comeback routes, the play action pass. I love that you move the pocket. And this has every option. You got everyone flooding the flat. You got the crosser and Jake Butt, and then your go to guy today, Amaro Darbo. That just shows you the confidence between receiver and quarterback that I'm going to throw it out there. I trust your catching radius to go and get anything. Play action again for Spade. Under some pressure, flips one to no man's land, and again does well to avoid the sack as Riley Bullock got there first. You and I love to talk about hidden yards in a game. 
That's now the fourth occasion where Wilton Spade has avoided 10, 15 negative yards. It's not just what the stat sheet shows with positive yards. This is a dead play. A young quarterback, and he's young in his experience. You say redshirt sophomore. A young quarterback typically doesn't have that kind of awareness to avoid the negative play. That's well coached and much better to get rid of it. A trap to Khalid Hill. Because, Gain of four. Because conversely, look at that. And we saw a naked earlier where he's got a free runner in his face. You chuck the ball and get rid of it. You've been looking at second and 20. You just put yourself so far out of schedule and he just doesn't do it. And you can run a little dive play with your fullback on second right. down and set up third and manageable. Oh, it changes everything if you avoid any kind of a loss, much less a significant loss on first down. Third down and six. Four-man rush. Spade outside the numbers. Climbing the ladder is Jake Butt. Another third down conversion for Michigan. Players formations plays. How do I get my players into one-on-one -on -one matchups that are advantageous for them? How do I get my 6-6 six, six tight end on a 5-11 corner? So my QB just feels good enough. Not a, not a good throw. In fact, that was probably a minus on the grade sheet as far as accuracy goes. But once again, precision when it comes to efficiency and moving the chains. Haran Higdon right up the middle. And the depth of players that Michigan has to go to offensively. We talked about it earlier. 19 different players this season have a rushing attempt. 22 different players have a reception. Now part of that is you're beating Rutgers by 70. Sure. You're getting your backups in the game. But you don't have... 41 different players touching the ball on offense unless you at least have a good dozen or so that you know you can go to over and over again. And they love being involved. They've used four different tailbacks on this drive. Spade rolls. Watch the wheel route down the sideline and throws an interception. Darian Hicks has a step. Darian Hicks can't stay in bounds. But the takeaway, beautifully played as Hicks saw the wheel route, diagnosed it, intended for Karan Higdon. Did Sparty ever need this? The other side defensively doing your job, and more than just your job, taking it away. Michigan State needed this so desperately, and that's one of the rare occasions where Wilton Spate didn't see it with his eyes. Harbaugh was talking to Allison how good Wilton's eyes were in that first half. And that time, not that he predetermined, he just never saw Hicks. You can see it. He never saw Hicks in the back, lurking, making the game-changing play. And Wilton Spate, again, threw an interception on his first attempt of the season in the opener against Hawaii. That is only his second interception since then. And it sets up the Michigan State offense with L.J. Scott trying to get to the edge. Maybe picked up a yard. Ben Gideon leads the team in tackles. His first year starting at that Mike linebacker spot for Michigan was there. Yeah, and talking to Jed Fish up there upstairs. And set that play up. I mean, that's one of their shot plays. You get into the positive side of the field. You've converted two third downs. Let's see if we can sneak that back out the backside if they're going to continue to cheat defensively. Even if it's called as much as you want to throw it, you still got to see it in that instance. O'Connor, end around flip. Donnie Corley has a step. Donnie Corley inside the 10. The true freshman sets up Michigan State first and goal at about the seven. And what a tremendous lead block here from Brian Allen, the offensive guard, the best lineman on that Michigan State crew. And look at his eyes up. Speaking of eyes up, so many times those linemen get out into space and they just want to go hit somebody. They don't have a vision to help their buddy out. Corley changed his number from 9 to 29. They have to play a little defense today. But what a response from Michigan State. you expect anything less in this rivalry? And I guess the best red zone defense in America. They just don't allow red zone opportunities Michigan State looking for a touchdown first time since the first drive they run the option Delano Hill make some dinner plans with Tyler O'Connor how does my face mask taste 
loss of a yard, second and goal from the eight. And you know it's good when even the hometown fans go. <gasps> <laughs> oh boy. Two tight ends, Josiah Price is the widest to the top of your screen. And he's their touchdown maker down here typically. LJ Scott lost another yard. Jabril Peppers one on one in the open field. Such tremendous speed. Now it's third down and goal from just inside the 10. Yeah, you typically ask linebackers to not duck underneath blocks. Right? We talk about containment and leverage and keeping that outside arm free. Watch Peppers here. No chance. That's Matt Sokol there, the redshirt sophomore tied in. Typically you go underneath. If you do so, you better be right. And you better have the kind of turnover and acceleration to go make that tackle, and Peppers does. Jabril Peppers needs to replace his divot. Be smart with the football. Even a field goal here is critical. Michigan shows blitz. They rush five. R.J. Shelton draws the flag, and it's on Peppers. What a huge call. Pass interference, defense number five. Foul occurred in the end zone by rule. The ball is placed at the two-yard line, automatic. First down. Well, it's a good thing this wasn't in closer view of Jim Harbaugh. Because if it was, he'd be running up and down that sidelines, pushing those glasses back up on the top of his nose. It's hand fighting. Both of them are hand fighting. R.J. Shelton, he initiates it. He's fighting. He's pushing. Peppers is fighting. He's pushing. I don't see anything that impeded his opportunity to go get the ball. They've let him play today. That, that one ticky-tack to me. L.J. Scott can't find any room. Eventually, it's Mike McCray that brings him down, but there was no change of the line of scrimmage up front for Michigan State. He might have lost a yard. Yeah, once again, you talk about setting the edge, and that time it is so cool that just gets driven into the ground. This is where that edge has got to be set. And Michigan does there, and you can see the amount of pursuit. There is nowhere. You want to run inside, you want to run outside, but that is all set up, that initial contact of setting a hard edge. What you hear elite defenses talk about all the time. The very best of them execute it. L.J. Scott again to about the yard and a half line. And Brock, I know you said earlier, protect the football. Even a field goal so critical. To me, this is four down territory for Michigan State against this defense. After you get the momentum changing interception to only kick a field goal here, I think would be a huge momentum swing in Michigan's favor. That's as long as you don't go backwards here. And remember the fourth best team in America getting after the quarterback and sacking the quarterback one already today. That headgear all messed up for Peppers today. I'm with you, but you cannot go backwards then in this situation. Peppers off the field on third down and goal. Same offset eye look with L.J. Scott, the tailback. Scott again. Second effort. Inside the two. This time it's Maurice Hurst. At least a yard and a half away from the end zone. So what does Mark D'Antonio do on fourth and goal from inside the two? Looks like he's going for it. I agree with this decision. I don't know with the way the game has played out to this point that you can settle for three. <laughs> I do too. You know I've always wanted that camera right down the line of scrimmage. Look at it. Look at Chris Wormley who was challenged earlier in this game to be more aggressive. Again, no wide receivers. They're going to try and run it again. L.J. Scott flagged down as he turns the corner and gets shut down by Jordan Lewis. Holy offense, number 70, definitely supplied. 
Pushed out. Hands are on hips, but I like it. You and I both like it. You have a conviction about who you are and what you do best, and let's not get ourselves. They don't they don't throw and catch very well right now. They run it, and they run it pretty successfully. You go down swinging, you go down doing the best you can, but right now you're swinging it against the opponent. It's bigger, it's faster, it's more seasoned, and built for an opportunity just like this. on ESPN. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's at 6. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Bears Vikings Monday night. From the four yard line Michigan takes over the second time they get a stop on downs. Karan Higdon. To the six, a gain of two. Let me make a case for that fourth down call that you're challenging right there. The ultimate game comes down to I'm going to tell you four guys right here. One, two, three, four. It comes down to this offensive guard who's got a hundred pound advantage blocking here, and then I got L.J. Scott on the corner one on one, and you just watch the execution. And that's a senior. That's a senior safety that's keeping his outside arm free that he's winning, and then the one on one, my corner beats your running back. A game of one-on-ones. I've got my running back on your corner. Michigan wins. Spade from the end zone, taking a shot for Darbo. Did he hold that in with one arm? He adds to a career-high day with maybe his best catch so far. Working on the true freshman, Justin Lane. What a day for Amara Darbo, a gain of 39 more. Can I be free to uh, share the conversation you and I had at halftime, Bob? about Michigan and how they would stack up in a playoff game against others. And you said, I, out on the perimeter, are they explosive enough? Right? Do they have enough game changers? I think they're underrated, and this guy in particular. You know, a season ago, it was the other side. It was Chesson that was their offensive MVP. Darbo just keeps getting better and better. Well, speaking of difference makers, here's one now. Look at the spin move by Jabril Peppers. Caught behind the line? Don't think so. He picks up seven and a half more. And welcome to college football, Josh King, number one player of the state of Illinois. Big time recruit, and he's going to be a good one. In a couple years, he's not going to miss that tackle, but right now he's a 6'6", 260-pound DN that's saying, Man, there was no one in high school like that. There is nobody that got out of my claws and out of my reach. Darien, Illinois, a season ago, but there's few like Peppers. Draw to Chris Evans. Just shy of the first down, Ed Davis made the stop. Back to Chris Cotter. Wow. Louisville cannot lose to Virginia. Third down and one. Hand off to the fullback, and a little extra effort from Khalid Hill. Met by Josh King, but it looks like he's got the first down again, and without measurement, the officials say a fresh set of downs for the Wolverines. And you know who else doesn't want to see Clemson, or see, I gave it away, see Louisville lose Clemson. They don't really play anybody else the rest of the year, and wow, look at that win over Louisville, and look at this. Well, then Louisville goes and loses a couple games. As heated as this stretch of November is going to be with Ohio State and with Michigan and with Washington and with everybody else fighting and clawing for a playoff spot. Clemson plays someone tonight. Sure do. An awfully big one. This time Jabril Peppers to the top of your screen, flexed out wide. They try to set up a little tunnel screen. And Demetrius Cooper jumps out to make the stop. That's a loss of at least a couple of yards. If Clemson goes undefeated, they're oh, in play. Oh, for sure. No, 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 no. That's only if there is a loss, if there's a loss in the Tallahassee tonight. And you know there's going to, we're going to see chaos. We, we, every time we turn the month of November in college football the last few years, we are going to see some losses, and more than likely we're going to see them today. We're seeing it with Louisville right now. And West Virginia struggling on the road. Back to Karan Higdon, a tailback. The toss to Higdon. Speed to the outside. And that should be good for a first down. Let's see where they mark the football. Yes, past the line to gain as he picks up nearly 13. 
Let's take a look at those unbeatens and the number of unbeatens on the road as we talked about. Michigan, Clemson, Washington, Nebraska, Baylor at Texas, West Virginia right now struggling at Oklahoma State. So and many over -unders teams. what, two? Yeah, that would factor in today that are having to win a game on the road. Two go down, three go down. Boise's got to go to Wyoming as well. I think most people would say that a safe bet is at least two of those undefeateds go down today. Digged in again. To the 27 yard line where he's brought down by Riley Bullock. And here's what I think the two at the top, and it's Alabama and it's Michigan to me at the very top of the food chain right now. And we've witnessed it here outside of that one giveaway is it's complementary football. Offense, defense, special teams. A lot of teams are electric in one face. Maybe a little limited or have a few holes in others. This Michigan team is a senior-laden team built for this run and built specifically because they can do it in all three phases. Maybe on Smith. It will be third down. Tyreek Thompson knifed behind the line and helped bring down Davion Smith. So now you'd have to think a must stop. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. A field goal here would at least keep Michigan State with a little sliver of hope in what would be a three possession game. And where's Darbo? And where's Jake Butt? And where are those matchup advantages that I've been able to find throughout and on many of these third down occasions? Spade underneath. It's Jake Butt. Look at the tight end reach for the sticks. Where do they mark him down? They'll say he stepped out. And Chris Fry might be cramping up after he made that stop on Jake Butt. But boy, that is one strong tight end to run through that tackle. And look at that kid. I was watching Chris warm up. I mean, that's a little bit in indicative of a two and five or emblematic. Elbow brace, can't move his elbow. Looks like a, a club on his thumb. I mean, battling and scratching and clawing and doing everything he can amidst a very difficult season. And immediately the cramp hits the back of that right calf. Well, John Reschke was a big loss for this defense. And they lost him with a severely sprained ankle against Wisconsin. He started all 14 games at the Sam linebacker spot last year, so Chris Fry had to step up to take that spot. And how about this? Fourth down and three. Michigan lines up to go for it love on it. what would love be it. about a 42, 43 yard You angle. do this when you love your defense. And why wouldn't Jim Harbaugh love his group on that side? They snap the football. Play action for Spade. Long throw to the sideline. Broke it up, but a flag comes out. Darian Hicks, hand-to-hand -hand combat with Amara Darbo. Well, if he called it on the other side, which they did in the end zone, then just be consistent with that call. Pass interference, defense number two. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. I love the anticipation. Look at the ball out. The ball is out well before Darbo is out of his break. But kind of like a go route we see. And we see an underthrown go route many times draw that penalty. It's the same route. It's to the boundary. There's plenty of field. Harbaugh loves it. And he should. And he loves his team. And it's representative of the aggressive play calling. Davion Smith. Inside the 10, close to the seven yard line before he's finally driven back. A gain of five yards. They're pretty relentless, aren't they? Well, there will be no foot off the gas pedal today for Michigan. You will see their starters, I would think, for the most part, on the field all the way through the fourth quarter. 
and whatever the final score is, is starters? what the final score they is. I didn't, they have starters? They're hard to find. I there didn't. are players <laughs> that start the game. I didn't see a depth chart, and I didn't see a depth chart because they play 90 <laughs> guys. He don't care. I just love the broadcaster bitterness that you're starting None. to develop None. in this industry. Pepper's back to take the direct snap on a keeper, and he spun down at the 12 yard line by Tyson Smith. That's a tremendous play. And then like the, the freshman Josh Keane playing defensive ends. That's textbook there. The final play of the third quarter from Tyson. And Sparty won't quit either. Too proud of program, too proud of head coach. They'll continue to play hard no matter what that scoreboard has to say. through this before That's this right. is the first trip for Washington That's exactly right and all of that noise and playing with expectation on your shoulders is a totally different animal third down and a long 10 close to 11 as we start the fourth quarter in the red zone for Michigan spade wide open Chesson this might be offensive pass interference as Chesson can't hold on to the football. Darbo ran a little slant. And it looks like they're going to call him for a pick play. If Mark D'Antonio declines the penalty, it would be a short field goal attempt from here. Pass interference. Offense, number 82, 15 yard penalty, repeat third down. And I would say, huh. Brock, I think you probably agree, the right decision, take the 15 yards and back them up. Yeah, I think when you're down 17, and I made this point a few different times, this is like baseball. And if you get hit by the baseball on the path, you're out. You have got to avoid contact. You know the whole concept. It's a rub on what you got to do, but you've got to do your best to not hit that defender to avoid that contact and avoid the penalty, yes, and you decline, or you accept because you're down 17. Play action for Spate. Throws one over the middle. Broken up. And now you're looking at what might be a missable field goal for Kenny Allen after that 15-yard penalty back Michigan all the way out near the 30-yard line. Jesson was the intended receiver. Grayson Miller was there in coverage. And now you're looking at a 45-yard field goal. And Jimmy and his quarterback both looking for contact with Grayson, that safety on the top of the route. Not getting the call. Career long for Kenny Allen is 47. He's got it. Smooth as could be. 20 point lead for Michigan early in the fourth quarter. Opportunity. With our <laughs> of Kahama. Trying to photobomb the selfie? Boy, that was unethical, to say the least. 20-point lead for Michigan. Michigan State about to get the football back, but unfortunately Brock with no passing attack to speak of today. And now they're in a spot where their offense has got to put the ball in the air. R.J. Shelton takes a knee. Out to the 25-yard line for the Spartans. Back in a moment. Anderson and the Cubbies get the equalizer in the World Series. All the college football, NBA, NHL highlights as well. Sports Center at night tonight after Nebraska, Wisconsin. Here on ESPN, streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. A quarterback change for Michigan State. Damian Terry takes over. They'll run a draw play on first down. LJ Scott gang tackled at the 32 yard line did pick up seven. So what does Terry Brock bring to the table? Why the quarterbacks? Well, he's typically the better runner and, and he's the zone read runner. And if you're going to get some aspect of, of that run game going, they have found success. They move the ball. They just can't do anything down in the red zone. So you're going to stick to your guns here. I think you're going to consistently still try to run the football, but I would sure like to see the pace picked up. They run the option. Terry on the keeper. He's got a first down. 
but it's go time. Right? I mean, I, and I understand it's shortening the game, and we sure loved it in the first quarter. But that play clock to me has got to be about 20 seconds maximum. And I got to get up and go. And missed opportunities. Eight plays Huge. inside the 10 yard line. And you come away with no points. Play action. Terry with a blitzer coming. Just throws it away. Delano Hill untouched. And Terry slow to get up as we check in with Chris Cotter. Sometimes during the course of the season, you have to find a way to win a game like that. And it'll be very interesting this week when the first college football playoff selection committee rankings are released. Draw play. L.J. Scott spins out of the arms of a tackler and gets down the sideline and gets a block. Well over 100 yards rushing now for L.J. Scott. And I'll go back to that fourth down call. That's what you were hoping to gain. Fourth and goal at the two. He still wants to be spoon fed. And he had a one on one situation with Jordan Lewis. Unfortunately, his left guard didn't help him. But look at this one on one. That's a one on one with a corner. And that time, Jamie Stribling can't do what his buddy on the other side, Jordan Lewis, did do and make the tackle. 139 yards now for LJ Scott. First back to go over 100 against this Michigan defense since Ezekiel Elliott last year in the Ohio State game. Play action. Terry looking for the end zone. Out of bounds. Monty Medaris, the intended receiver. Let's check in with Allison. Well, Jabril Pepper is not out there right now for the Michigan defense, and oftentimes a product of playing in all three phases of the game. You can get a little bit dehydrated. He's been battling through some cramps, able to get back out on the field now, but he's out there for a ton of snaps, so multiple times he's been on the sideline, you know, taking a lot of Gatorade in, getting stretched out and worked on on there as he's trying to keep on playing through those. A humid day as well. Mid-60s mid or so, almost unseasonably warm here as we push into November. If you're Michigan State there, that's unfortunate. A rare double move by Monte Medeiros. If those got to get up and down earlier, that was a touchdown. Wolverines bring a blitz. Terry on the keeper. And not bad to pick up five yards on second down and ten. As you have to think, this is down by 20. All four down territory for Michigan State. It'll be third down and five. Martin still huddling up and valuable time coming off the clock. The closest man in the trips to the top of your screen, R.J. Shelton. He's been quiet. Draw play. Quarterback keeper inside the 10-yard line with a first down. Goes Damian Terry. Around the ankles brought down by Channing Stribling. But it's first and goal. And that's what he brings. You said coming into the game. Why? Why, why in the fourth quarter would he mix it up at quarterback? Because Terry does have that capability, and I like it. A little bit of tempo now as you're pushing into the red zone. But this has been the troubled area inside the 10. Been so hard to find any production. Where's your one-on-one -on -one you like? In Michigan, you got three, four different options that you can find offensively. Where is your one-on-one -on -one situation that's ideal? They run the option. The pitch. Scott loses the football. He's got it back. But a big negative play on first and goal all the way out to the 17-yard line. A nine-yard loss where you can't take a loss if you're Michigan State. And trying to duck under a little. Maybe the foot slips just a little bit. He's also trying to duck under that defensive end that's bearing down on him. Option play into the short area of the field. Boom or bust. And D'Antonio's face says it all. Well, he's seen his offense get down into the area where you can score some points and come away empty before. Now it's second down and goal, but from the 17. 
and you're in a four minute drive. Play clock winding down as well. Slant and that's a short hop. They try to get it to R.J. Shelton and he had a step. That's just a miss from the quarterback. Now it's third and goal from the 17. Yeah, and that's a couple misses here. And this is some of the challenge now when you got a guy that's been sitting and watching all game. You've got a double move to Medeiros. It's open, and these are the things that D'Antonio talked to us about yesterday. And Jim Harbaugh knows it as well. Those are well schemed. There's a reason Michigan State's won so many games over the years, and that was Connor Cook, who didn't miss those throws last season. Right? And receivers on the outside that could win one-on-one -on -one matchups. And opportunities when they presented themselves, you got to hit them, especially against elite teams. There's a third down call just to get in position yes. to take a shot at the end zone on fourth down. Here comes the blitz. Terry, long throw, incomplete. Josiah Price, the intended receiver, and boy, he got hit hard, and now he's hurt. Taco Charlton was in the backfield, part of a Michigan rush that walloped Damian Terry. Chris Warmly was there as well. Yeah, it was really all three guys and one of their late stunts and blitzes there as you see Gideon coming in. Two defensive ends, 270 pounds, 265 pounds. So we'll take an injury timeout and come back to Spartan Stadium in just a moment. And he's got to come out of the game for at least one play, which means you got to put O'Connor in there to throw one in the end zone. Yes. Yep. Jeez. That was a free runner though. I mean those guys got beat but like that, that, that there was nothing the offensive line could do there. Turn with a 34 yard field goal attempt from Michael Geiger. So, in spite of getting all the way down inside the 10 yard line, the negative play forcing Michigan State back, even with a make here, it's still a three possession game. And Geiger, did he sneak it inside the upright? He did not. So, rather than throw one in the end zone, which would have been a very low percentage play for Mark D'Antonio. He sends out what he thinks is a high percentage play to at least score points. A house divided. This will be rooting for the right half of that shirt. <laughs> As a 20 point lead for the Mason Blue. As they again get a stop with no Michigan State points. Chris Evans is thrown down. Malik McDowell. With a tackle for loss, it'll be second down and about 12 for Michigan. And finally, and finally we get a, an opportunity to see the All-American candidate. He's picking on a true freshman, Ben Bredesen, over sets there at left guard. And there you see I think what Mark D'Antonio and his staff have wanted to see a whole lot more. And Malik, the only returning starter on that defensive line, you referenced that earlier, Bob. I think he's just carrying the weight of too much expectation with a group that's unfortunately not nearly as productive as they've been in years past up front. Toss sweep to Evans. He might have lost another yard. That time Riley Bullock came through to make the stop. And tonight, undefeated number three Clemson with a tough test. 
as they'll head to Doak to take on 12th ranked Florida State at 8 Eastern on ABC presented by Walmart. Also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. You know, we have the opportunity to see something we've not seen in 50 minutes. And that's a punt from Michigan. That is, of course, if Michigan State can find a way to get off the field on third and extra long. Spade to throw. Looking for Darbo down the sideline. He got his feet tangled with Donnie Corley, and Malik McDowell is hurt. So the first time we have seen the Michigan State defense get a three and out and they end the three and out with their best defensive player looking like he is in a lot of pain. Yeah this was awkward he's one on one with Ben Braden the left tackle right at the bottom we talked about him playing out on the edge and he said he likes to do this just a real awkward movement he immediately grabs his side there. And he was a monster a season ago. He was part of that incredibly formidable group on that defensive line with three three of his buddies that are all now getting paid in the league and he was an inside force trying to play outside on the perimeter not necessarily his strength. So while McDowell walks off the field let's check in with Chris Cotter. Sometimes when you win the Heisman and it looks like Lamar Jackson is going to do that you win a game like it looks like he might win at UVA. Brandon Sowards to return the putt. Returnable from just inside the 35. Gets to the 41. 9 0 1 to go in the fourth quarter. No room for error now for Michigan State his career high with eight catches and Brock 165 yards a new career high and his buddies put it right on his chest a couple times and then like a good combination does quarterback and wide receiver I'll go up and make a play and doesn't matter if the young freshman's holding my other arm down this day and age and I can thank Odell Beckham for all these one handed catches Barbo's a stud Richard senior that stepped up unlike some of these Michigan State senior seniors that have struggled in their class not Michigan. Now it's Brian Lewerke back shoulder throw and that's off the mark for the freshman Donnie Corley. And I'll tell you what Mark D'Antonio and we see the third quarterback now for Michigan State it's going to be kicking himself when he watches this tape because if they just hit the double move. Right, the previous possession in the red zone, a double move to Madaris that you have in beat, or R.J. Shelton on the little rub route, a catch and run that he very easily could have scored on. How much different is the feel in this stadium and environment at 30 to 17 than as we sit here at 30 to 10? Opportunities present themselves. You have to take advantage against really good defenses. Low snap. Lewerke may have been on a knee when he scooped that ball up and almost threw a pick to Jabril Peppers. I'm not sure that Lewerke wasn't down when he scooped the ball up. The officials let the play continue and then it was almost a pick. Yeah, that's a, he's down. That is a great point. And obviously very awkward there from Benny McGowan in the center there. I don't think he knew whether or not the quarterback was underneath him or in the shotgun and pretty good footage there the replay booth is taking a look as they look at every single play and I think they have just buzzed down to take a look at exactly that previous plays under further review well Brian Lewerke made his first two starts over the last two weeks Tyler O'Connor began the season and in a week five loss to BYU O'Connor didn't have his best day seven of eleven for fifty eight yards he was benched Lewerke came on now three weeks ago against Northwestern Lewerke struggled O'Connor came on in the second half and he threw for 285 yards and three touchdowns but then he wasn't able to make the start against Maryland because of injury so it was back to Lewerke and it was literally a game time decision today as to which guy would start 
O'Connor proved that he could at least protect himself and run around and play quarterback against this Michigan defense. But with any of these QBs, there has been no pass attack. No consistency, no continuity, and this fan base is getting used to seeing what life's like when you don't have an NFL quarterback. I think Wilton Spade's going to be an NFL quarterback. Connor Cook was absolutely the winningest quarterback in the history of this program, and moved on to the Raiders in the NFL, and when you don't have that critical position, and you play in this conference against the big boys, and Ohio State and Michigan, and Penn State fighting and climbing and trying to get to that status as well. Hart, Connor Cook won this game last year, 330 yards passing. He and Burbridge, Burbridge, they were the difference. Their run game has been plenty good enough today. They just have got no complimentary passing game with it. And Michigan State has run for 194, Michigan for only 173. And 42 of the last 46 meetings have been won by the team that outrushes the opponent. Here's the call. After further review, the quarterback possessed the ball with his knee on the ground. He's down at that point. At the 36-yard line, third down and 15. The clock will start, and we're ready for play. But Brock, in all of those seasons, where either Michigan or Michigan State outrushed the opponent, they would outrush the opponent with the threat of play action, Correct. with a quarterback that could take shots down the field. So in spite of the fact that Michigan State might win, might lose today, and outrush Michigan, you can't play one-handed all day, and that's what they tried to do. So now it's third down at 15. Tough spot for Brian Lewerke on his first opportunity. Steps up in the pocket, low throw, Josiah Price. Did he scoop it up? Looks like he did, five yards shy of the first down, a gain of 10, so it will be fourth down and five. That would be a pretty heroic effort if he's able to dig this out, and you see the Lewerke there, the redshirt freshman, climbing up into the pocket, gotta set your feet, still gotta set your feet as you're climbing so you can throw a rocket out there. Yeah, and I think they're gonna take another look there. Crowd doesn't like it. Pepper sure does. Well, the ruling on the field was a catch. So there has to be indisputable evidence to overturn that call, which means you have to see the ball hit the ground. You can make an argument he got his arms underneath. I don't know if you can see enough of the football from that look. Michigan State. On those first two replay looks, spectacular placement of their other players to get in the way of the football. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think the call on the field is critical. And the call on the field was it was a catch. I think all three of those are a little difficult to discern. Do you see the ball bounce off the turf there enough to overturn that Ooh, call? And it sure looks like it's moving. I think that is going to be the only look that you really got to focus on there. And I got my hands underneath it and I held on to it. Well, it's either fourth down and five or fourth down and 15, depending upon the outcome of this review. And it just continues to illustrate how nothing comes easy nothing. against this defense. Nothing. They don't blow coverages. They're never out of position. And that's middle linebacker. That's Ben Gideon, and that's not his best strength. He's, and you can see it, climbing downhill and hitting these lanes and stunts and leading tackler in the run game. But even he is capable against Josiah, their best, one of their best receiving options to get out there in space, still cover him up. And I think that's correct. It just was not that indisputable view to knock him back the other way. So fourth down and five instead of fourth down and 15. And no margin for error, as you said. Now they need three touchdowns in eight minutes. And he knows it. Michigan gets pressure on Lewerke, flushes him out of the pocket, he'll hoist one downfield. Up in the air goes R.J. Shelton to pull it in at the 20-yard line. A gain of 34 and a fourth down conversion. 
And again, what it takes to find big plays and pretty heroic effort to extend the play. Love the eyes down the field. A little off balance in the throw, but that's what Shelton's capable of doing in the open field. Lewerke. Enzo Madaris. Touchdown. Pretty good pitch and catch. That opportunity presented itself on the previous possession down in the red zone. A little hesitation there by Medeiros. Press man coverage creates enough separation. Stranger things have happened. A lot of stranger things. There's still 7.30 to go and three timeouts from Michigan State. The lead down to 13. Can you trust your defense? Or if you're Michigan State, would you think onside kick? When we come back after Monty Madaris with his first touchdown reception of the season makes it a two score game with seven and a half to go. Special teams we saw them earlier this year now what they are is a senior laden team a lot like Michigan. It's a pretty battle tested a mentally tough crew. You can't slip anything past Jim Harbaugh nope. as well by the way he has a hands team out there ready for any type of surprise onside kick with seven and a half minutes to go. And with that hands team group out there Michigan State sends it deep. Jordan Lewis at the five. Brought down inside the 20 yard line. Let's go back to Chris Cotter. All right, Chris, thanks very much. Bob Wischusen, Brock Ewart, Allison Williams here at Spartan Stadium. Is there a little life left in these Spartans coming off a touchdown with 7.26 to go? Well, they kicked it deep, so it's all dependent now on their defense getting a stop. They're selling out to stop the run. Spade drops to throw, swings it in the flat. A three-yard gain to Khalid, Heel, uh, Khalid Hill. And let's go down to Allison. You guys were talking about the nightcap here on Big Saturday, Nebraska and Wisconsin. It's personal, too, for Wisconsin's Paul Chris and Nebraska's Mike Riley. They've been friends since 1991. And Holly Rowe, who covered the sidelines, telling me that Chris said, Riley is my number one football influence in my life. They spend a ton of time together. They know each other's offensive styles and tendencies. And Chris told Holly that this will be about Nebraska and Wisconsin, but sometimes the best battles are between brothers. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, this is about a three and out if you're Michigan State. It's going to really change the dynamic in this building if they can get it done. Spate on a keeper. Makes a man miss. Look at Wilton Spate. Shaking and baking out to the 25-yard line, but it is third down. Austin Robertson, true freshman, was able to help bring him down. So now the must for the Michigan State defense. That's a 6-6 dead leg right there for a very manageable third and three. And I'm telling you, the hometown faithful feel it. As much as they've been bludgeoned at times, they are still in this game if they can get off the field defensively here. Spate, play action. He wants to throw for it. He's got a wide open Chesson, and he drops it in. First down, Michigan. And they trust their quarterback. Sure a first-year starter, but throwing for it on third down, a gain of 23. Yeah, they sure do, and, and I don't know what the safety here is doing. Grayson Miller is back there, and we just lose eyes. The number of times we talk about eyes, especially in these pro-style systems, and right there, flat-footed, Wilton Spate takes advantage. And if the Michigan story this season has been their defense, which I get it, pretty historic what they're doing on that side, it's been Jabril Peppers. I hope people start talking about Wilton Spate because he has been an enormous X factor this afternoon. Now it's Karan Higdon. Pounded down, but after a gate of six at the 46 yard line. It was last week that Jim Harbaugh 
and there's our poor guy Chris Fry who has just taken an absolute beating. Took the shot in the jaw, shoes off, had the cramps, elbow brace, he only, has, thumb. He only has one working hand. He can't wobbly. put his own shoe back no. on. But there is Wilton Spade. Jim Harbaugh said a week ago his best game. His most complete game, he was tremendously accurate. One poor decision, one interception, and that's about it today. Pretty flawless execution and efficiency, which you've got to have at that position in this system. One left. Instead, it's right up the middle. And it will be third down again as Higdon has turned back after a game of a half yard. And now Mark D'Antonio is going to use one of those timeouts and sell out to try and get a stop with four and a half minutes remaining. Well, I thought the thing that Jim Harbaugh said about Wilton Spade, which was great, was how he talked about Brock. And obviously, you're a tall quarterback. Understanding, as we take another look at the replay of the Higdon run, how he is playing to his six foot six frame. Correct. Correct. And and when you do that, and you can see Spate right there, he's having a conversation. When you do that, you just start to control the whole game. You'll hear me talk about, Bob, just that whole field awareness of being able to see and sense and feel everything. And quite honestly, that time, and you said, well, they ran it up the middle. They, that was a misread. I mean, everything, that was a power run. That's supposed to bounce outside. And that's the sophomore Higdon getting a little, I think, overexcited. But I am watching the presence of this kid grow week after week after week. And you nailed it. And you know this from the NFL. How much you trust your quarterback? Third and three? Are you going to slam it in there behind your redshirt seniors and your big boys? Or do you trust him enough to make the most critical play yet of the game? And they do. Now, there aren't many teams even in the NFL that on third and three, third and four, when you either want the other team to burn timeouts yep. or cost them 40 seconds, that you trust your quarterback to be accurate and composed enough to throw the ball there. Here's Shane Morris now in a quarterback on third down and about two and a half. And this is typically movement when he's in the game. There goes Chris Evans. And instead it's a trap handoff to Davion Smith. And Michigan State was ready for it. Well, and there's our big boy in the middle. He's coming to life in this fourth quarter. I mean, he is right there nose to nose with Mason Cole right here. And you're exactly right. You're trying to anticipate movement. And that's what the tendency has been. And big Malik McDowell says, enough's enough. I've had it. I'm tired of these Michigan guys. I'm going to toss Mason Cole, all-conference caliber center, right to the ground. And the big man shows up, forces the punt, keeps this game alive for Michigan State. And I'll say it again, stranger things have happened in rivalry games. Kenny Allen, of course, handles the place kicking in punting duties. You better handle the snap here. This is the only... Only the second punt for him today. He's going to take all that time down. The intentional end over end kick, fair catch for Sowards at the 15 yard line. Again, it is a big Saturday rolling on as soon as we're done. 3 30 Eastern, Northwestern, number six Ohio State, then at seven. That road test for seventh-ranked Nebraska. Can they prove their worth at Camp Randall against number 11, Wisconsin? Both of those games coming up on ESPN, also streaming live on the ESPN app, and watch ESPN. A triple header of Big Ten football today on ESPN. I, I think this is going to be pushed down the field. You're going to get one-on-ones. You're going to have those opportunities, and I would think this is Shelton, this is Medeiros, the big play, the previous drive. Corley, there have got to be some shots deep down the field in this possession. Only one deep safety. Lewerke rises up in the pocket. Now looks to extend the play. Gets loose. Lewerke all the way out to the 39-yard line before he's brought down by Delano Hill. The big explosive plays have come how? Secondary time, just on that last possession, buying time, extending the play, because in the normal framework, Michigan's got it covered up. But the ability to find that secondary play has been the big play. Lewerke again trying to extend the play, and this time just throws it away. Well, his feet are a bigger factor for Lewerke than O'Connor. Yes. Obviously, his mobility. That was something that Mark D'Antonio told us 
about Brian Lewerke. He said the, the problem is sometimes he's pulling his hair out because he's a little too quick to run and make that decision to take off. But twice there showing his ability to extend the play. Play fast, never in a hurry. You got to play fast, and especially against this group, but you can't be so hurried that it rushes your reads and your fundamentals. Lewerke with a bullet. Just shy of the first down marker to Donnie Corley. It will be third down and two in valuable time. Go. Continuing to tick off that clock. You've got to get to the right play, but here's that play fast. You've got to have a sense of urgency in this moment. They'll run it with Gerald Holmes. Trying to get the first down, and he's got it. At least for the moment, that will stop the clock. Jim Harbaugh knows it. He's looking at that clock in two timeouts. There he is. Ample time left in this ball game. Lewerke to his secondary read. And now he scrambles again. Out of bounds at the 41 yard line. A gain of eight. Donnie Corley laid a block on Ben Gideon out on the edge. Throw. This is R.J. Shelton. Breaks a tackle, makes another man miss. To the 20-yard line. Bob. Bob. People thought it was over with 12 seconds to go last season. I mean, you are seven. <laughs> you want to talk about pressure. Where is this pressure starting to fall? It's starting to fall on that defensive group. Lewerke looking end zone. Incomplete. Monty Medeiros was looking for a second touchdown reception. Couldn't lay out for that one. It'll be second down and 10 from the 18. That does stop the clock with 2.27 to go. And he had it. We could put a reel together. Three or four shots here in the red zone. Just a double post move. Clear the safety out. Get everything you want. And the redshirt freshman just misses that throw. That ball placement that you have to have against Jim Harbaugh's man-to-man -man coverage. And I'll say, you score seven here, 30-24. And you know what Michigan starts to think? Man, we have lost seven of these last eight to these guys, and they will not go away. Here comes the blitz. It's picked up. Wide open out on the edge is Tristan Jackson. Boy, his momentum carries him out of bounds at the 13-yard line. If he could turn up field there, that was almost the perfect execution of Michigan State burning the blitz. Getting what they want. They are getting what they want. They had just got to throw it a little more accurately, have a little better protection. And that Michigan defense so dominant for 50 minutes of this game on their heels. Third down and five, coming up on two minutes to go. Timing route for Medeiros. Looking for a flag. Now it's fourth down and five. Channing Stribling was there in coverage. And it looked like Channing Stribling leveraged that coverage very nicely. Yeah, and you don't just, I think, get a bailout call here. Yeah, there's contact. There's both of them. Got to fight back for it, though. Medeiros, and that's coaching point. You want the call? Then don't look for a bailout penalty with the game on the line in the final two minutes. Go after the ball. Go make the play. Michigan State has been here before. One for three on fourth down. Fourth and five to try and keep the game alive. That's man-to-man -man coverage. You know what you're going to get. Blitz coming. Lewerke in trouble. Down he goes. Jabril Peppers gets the sack. And Michigan gets another stop on downs. And they put this game on ice.
You know what you're going to get pre-snap. It's pretty obvious. And I said to you earlier in this game, you have tendencies because you're pretty good at what you do. Those face masks are all looking at face masks. You're going to get man-to-man -man coverage. Where do you want to go? Who's going to win in man-to-man? -man? Where do you have a win? He's covered because he's got inside help. Look at every other receiver right now in lockdown mode. There is no place, no place to go with the football. And that's just the suffocating nature of this defense. Have they been pushed today? Yes. In a rivalry game, were they getting tested in ways they haven't this season on the road? 100%. But ultimately, I love the fact. Stick to your guns. The conviction that Harbaugh has to play that man-to-man -man coverage. Believe in and trusting his athletes to get it done, and they do. And D'Antonio knows. I had double post on first down. I had a double move on my previous two possessions. I had situations there where we did win. But against good crews, you get four or five as we're working now yet again. Another beat up quarterback for Michigan State. Well, that's what happens when you play Michigan. Yep. Your quarterbacks they are going to get hit. And Brian Lewerke and Damian Terry both knocked out of the game by Jabril Peppers and this Michigan defense. He's a winner, isn't he, Bob? Jabril Peppers was the best player in high school football in New Jersey. He went to Don Bosco Prep, won two state championships transfer to Paramus Catholic guess what they did they won two more state championships just after his transfer all he's ever done is win you know, and I showed you the game tape yesterday we walked through a couple different games and there's plays where is a strong side linebacker he's not equipped and built but man does he have a grit and a want to and determination and when you're the most physically gifted player on this field and he is I mean, just the, the, the way that he's wired and he's built and his suddenness and everything that the scout's going to talk about. But just what has been represented today is a want to. That, 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 that's, that's built on being a champion at every level that he's been at. Well, Don Brown, the defensive coordinator, when we asked him about Jabril Peppers, said he's ridiculous. You can be in 11 personnel, he can cover the tight end. He can play all the linebacker spots. He can split out wide. You can do so many things with him that you can change all different hybrid yeah. looks with your defense and never have to substitute to get it done because he is just a moving piece all over the yeah, field. He's, he's interesting. It's, it's almost Troy Palomalu. So I get a little feel with him when he was at USC and he was linebacker safety. He was everywhere. And just his energy and passion were so relentless and his team fed off of it. Aaron Higdon up the middle. Very close to the first down, and most likely Mark D'Antonio will use his final timeout, looks like, as we check in with Allison. I asked Peppers about all the different positions he plays and just the challenge, not, not just physically, but mentally. And I love it. He said, it's not that hard. It's just football. So simple, right? And then, you know, he has to divvy up his time, though. He's got to be smart about it in practice and make sure he gets in the necessary reps out there on special teams, offense, and defense. And he said a lot of that comes down to the meetings, too. So he starts his day in special teams, spends about 10, 15 minutes in the offensive meetings, gets his playbook, goes over that, and then heads to the defensive room. But he's just got such a great memory. He's one of those unique guys. You tell him once, he says he's got it, and he really does. Exactly what Don Brown said. When you go on a Monday with the next game plan ready to go to get ready for Saturday, give him five different jobs, yeah. and that's exactly what he says. No problem. Yeah, I've got it. Tell me once. It's ingrained in my brain, and now when I have to go out there and do these five different jobs, I'm on it. And you know who typically are those kind of players that just have that football? That's right. And you know what else is really nice as a teammate? To know this guy is bringing everything. And if he's doing it, as gifted as he is, then I better step my game up and do it too. Psycho competitor. Michigan is one yard away from victory formation. And they may get it. Let's see where they spot the football. Looks like Karan Higdon was well short, but a second effort got him very close. Riley Bulla. The senior continuing to play with pride in the middle of that defense. I think Jim's talking about punt. Punt formation, <laughs> what we're going to do, and what kind of punt we're going to. There's no rugby style. They don't do it this season anyway. But you're going to want to secure this snap and get it out and get it out in a hurry. This is good for Michigan. These are the kind of games that when you go out on the road, you spent the first five weeks in Ann Arbor. Rutgers is... Rutgers, so well, they good to be did, tested. They did do this, though, at home against Wisconsin. That was an old-fashioned yep. slugfest Big Ten-style football, and they won it by a touchdown. 
And now they're about to win, potentially by two touchdowns, the rivalry game on the road against Michigan State. So what is to come? Well, there's a very good chance if Ohio State and Michigan do what we think they will do, everything that we would have thought November 26th would have meant in spite of that Ohio State loss to Penn State still could mean everything. A borderline playoff game. Yep. If they play that game November 26th and all of a sudden reschedule it to tomorrow, we've seen both of these teams in person now. Mm -hmm. Which do you like, Michigan or Ohio State, if you had to pick? I like the depth and leadership of, Mich of Michigan. But that's about the only thing. Ohio State's a bunch of young guys that turned over that team, and, man, they've got an edge to them. But, but this team is, is hardened by senior-laden experience. Kenny Allen seamlessly gets it away. Donnie Corley makes the first man miss, but can't get away back at about the 25-yard line. And whereas Ohio State a year ago was the veteran team, unfortunately their knees were cut out with entitlement. Right? They, they just they had a bunch of entitled guys that were looking at that next level. I get none of that sense from Michigan. In fact, you look at Jordan Lewis and Jake Button, so many of these seniors, and there are a bunch of them that are going to get drafted as you see O'Connor coming back into the game for Michigan State. He's the only healthy quarterback that they still have. It's a, it's a compliment to Jim, the culture that he's already built and established there in Ann Arbor, that these seniors wanted to come back. You just don't hear all that NFL noise, all that NFL chatter. It's about what they're doing and their goals ahead of them and everything right in front of them. Well, it is nothing but seniors on both sides of the football for Michigan. O'Connor dumps one off to L.J. Scott. And he's loose down the sideline. Out of bounds at the Michigan 41-yard line with 27 seconds to go. O'Connor took another shot. L.J. Scott's not giving up. Mark D'Antonio's not giving up. Michigan State didn't give up. They didn't come in here as a wounded 2-5 and five team and say, we've got no shot. They've done things to this Michigan defense nobody else has done this season, moving it up and down the field. Just the inability to capitalize in the red zone when it mattered really stung them this afternoon. O'Connor under pressure across his body. Chucks one as far as he can with a flag down. And another flag thrown at the 10-yard line with 21 seconds to go. Shelton, the intended receiver. Jordan Lewis was there in coverage. There's also a flag in the offensive backfield. So two 15-yard penalties called against Michigan. Pass interference, defense number 26. That penalty's declined. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 43, 15-yard penalty, Mike, first down. Plays under review. So now they're going to review whether or not Chris Wormley could be called for targeting. Yeah, that was the signal the referee gave. Uh, that, that target today, that's why it is being reviewed. They're reviewing whether this is a targeting call, and I don't think Wormley believes it is. Well, the importance of this call is that if Chris Wormley is called Correct. for targeting, he's out for the first half of Michigan's next game. It certainly looked like Wormley hit Tyler O'Connor in the shoulder. I guess you could make an argument that maybe the crown of the helmet was what he used. Let's take another look. I, I think his eyes are up. I think he hits him in the shoulder. It he's, can na be he's naturally dipping into that down. That is not a crown of the helmet into 
forcible contact to the head and neck area. He's hitting him. I mean, if you slow it down to that degree, I get it. It starts to look like that, but I think he hits him in the shoulder. Obvious pass interference. Well, this still can be roughing the passer. You could still have a late hit on the quarterback. That's Correct. not targeting, so it could just be your run-of-the-mill 15-yard roughing penalty, but Wormley is not lost for the first half of the next game. Yes. And there you did see as O'Connor was hobbling away that, that lower leg injury that he suffered from. You've got three beat up quarterbacks. And I'm surprised that this review is taking as long as it is. But I guess they feel as if they have to look at every conceivable angle just mm -hmm. to make sure the importance of this call doesn't cost a fifth year senior the first half of the next game. It looks like we have the call. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. However, roughing the passer penalty by rules in force, 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. The clock will start on the snap. That's right, Cole. You clean it up and you get it right. And, and I think this crew today is in a lot of conversation. I think the replay booth is right. You know, you're going to naturally come into a tackle, right? You're going to try to dip, but, but that is not the crown of the helmet leading into any forcible contact there. They get it right. And Michigan State, if they're going to get it right, has to score here in a hurry and hope for an onside kick miracle. Slant. And it looks like that is held on to by the true freshman, Tristan Jackson. Stops the clock just for the moment. First down to the 15-yard line. Front pylon throw. Fighting for the football was Donnie Corley. Couldn't work his way around Jordan Lewis. And he is a good one, isn't he? You and I clamor all around college football for more defense. Give me more defense. Why can't we see more defense? Because you don't find many elite corners. That's why. Because you don't find guys that can play one-on-one -on -one coverage and just take people away the way that Jordan Lewis is capable of doing so. How about Jordan Lewis played youth football in Detroit growing up? Two of his teammates, Desmond King from Iowa, who won the Thorpe Award last year, and Malik McDowell patrolling the defensive line. How about those three bodies pretty good on your top huh? corner football team? <laughs> My goodness. Another flag comes out as R.J. Shelton was interfered with inside the 10-yard line. So Jordan Lewis this time gets called for the penalty as the announcer Jinx works to perfection. And it'll be first and goal, but only five seconds to go. Pass interference, defense number 26. The ball be placed at the spot of the foul, automatic. First down. So one more opportunity for Michigan State for a cosmetic touchdown, down by two scores with five seconds remaining. And this Michigan defense makes you earn it all the way down to the last gun. O'Connor, back corner, reaching up to make the catch is Donnie Corley for a touchdown with one second to go. Give me a lot of what ifs. I think in the papers today and the conversations following this game, what if you could have just punched it in? I'm not going to go against that fourth down run call. It was a one on one with his best player on a corner, and Jim Harbaugh's crew won. The missed field goal, impossible conversation, there's no doubt about it. But to me, it was the execution of five or six plays in the red zone that they had an opportunity to really take advantage of, and they couldn't quite get it done. So Michigan State will run a two-point play. And now Jim Harbaugh will call a timeout to get his defense set for the two-point conversion attempt. I'm not sure of the, the reason that Michigan State would run a two-point play here. There's one second to go, so the only hope that you would have for some crazy play on an onside kick where you scoop the ball up and run for a touchdown, and, that, and even and it, still, no, it, it, you'd be down seven if you don't get the two-point play here. Yeah, I don't understand this math. 
at all. Other than just for the cosmetic nature of getting closer and closer on the scoreboard, having the final and score be yeah, instead of down by seven, that's, down by five. It doesn't feel like Mark D'Antonio in any way, does it? That's a beautiful play by Corley. And once again, one of these true freshmen, absolute stud true freshmen that will be back here in a couple years talking about these Spartans and, and what they endured early in their career as young players and turned into difference makers late. I will say this, if something crazy happens on a kickoff, can you promise me your voice cracks five different times? <laughs> can, can we make that bet right now? Whatever happens on this two-point conversion, there's some crazy onside kick of bounces and everything else, and they find a way to get this done this year. Well, there's no doubt that Mark D'Antonio and these Spartans are going to look at this game film and realize that their offense at least was good enough to get the ball down into the scoring area of the field to give them a chance to not just compete, but even to win this game. But it's in that spot on the field where we saw Michigan's defense yep. rise up and be a championship defense. They got fourth down stops. They got goal to go stops. They turned the ball over on downs. And every time there was a chance for their defense to make that big momentum swing play, a momentum swing stop, they seem to get it done. Mercifully, the two teams are now out of timeouts before the two-point play. As O'Connor will run the option, and it pitches it backwards, and it's scooped up, and there goes Jabril Peppers. He's going to score going the other way. And pad the Michigan lead. Go ahead and add that to the Heisman reel because he's in that conversation and he's earned a whole lot more of my respect. Antonio hates it. That's the worst thing that could possibly happen. You give up two the other way. Coming in here today, I was prepared to talk about Peppers getting run at and run on and, and ducking under blocks and going over the top of blocks and doing those things. After 60 minutes, Bob, you know, I'm convinced. I'm convinced if there's a defensive guy in college football that's worthy to get to New York City, not Lamar Jackson, it's not Sean Watson if he takes care of business. Jake Browning at Utah. But what this kid does in every phase of the game, all three of them, and the impact he can have and the love for football that you see, be it with the slip at the end, he's special talent. And running option, you can see O'Connor, he can't even chase it down. Michigan State's going to have real questions about their quarterback next week. Two of them knocked out of this game already. O'Connor is just limping and hobbling through. And Peppers to the finish line. Well, now it's onside kick practice with one second to go. Well, now no risk of your voice cracking. Darn it. Don't pick on my guy, Sean. Great. One of the great calls one ever. One of the great calls ever. ever. The immediate identification of Jalen Watts Jackson on that play was as good as it gets. So here's Kevin Cronin. Jake Butt is the designated receiver over there. And it does almost get the hop with a flag down, obviously, for the ball going out of bounds. Nearly found Donnie Corley. On the hot, imagine if he ran it all the way down. Well, he can't advance it <laughs> can't anyway. Advance it. <laughs> <laughs> so now it will be victory formation for Michigan. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Ball be placed five yards from the spot where it went Man, out of bounds. November, First down, Michigan. What? And also, Jabril Peppers is a junior. We think this is probably his final year at Michigan. Yes. Let's not underestimate what this win means to all of these seniors. For the Wolverines, right. who, if they lost today, would have left Michigan without ever having beaten Michigan State. That's right. Are you prepared for November in college football? I think Michigan is. It'll be a wild ride to the finish line. Wilton Spate makes it official. The backflip from Peppers. And it's a Michigan win in their rivalry game with the Spartans. 32-23 for Allison Williams.
And Brock Hewitt, I'm Bob Wischusen. So long from Lansing, Dave Pash and Greg McElroy. Now on the call, the Buckeyes in Northwestern.